to have Betsy guys on again in the future. Uh, anybody out there might be interested in sponsoring this show or coming on the show, you can reach out at the right corner at protonmail.com. Go to the Goldfest and Fair Chance Wednesday, 6 to close for Awesome Wings, $9.20, dine-in only. And that pretty much does it for tonight, guys. Thank you both for coming on. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to have that to you on again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to the right quarter. I'll see you back at the normal time next Friday at 6.15. Thanks, everybody. It's time for another C.R. Piranha Group High School Sports Day. Coverage of high school baseball here on WMBS, the Triple Live High School Sports Network and Facebook Live being brought to you by the C.R. Piranha Group. Fayette County Recorder of Deeds, John Marietta. Uniontown Detailing, the Center's for Rehab Services and Physical Therapist, Jim Burns. State Farm Agent, Lauren Yeoman. General Dentist, Dr. Edward Wiesek. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County. m &R Transit, the Radcliffe Law Firm. The Browns Insurance Group and Agent David Hughes, Potter's Bar and Grill, the WVU Medicine Union. Did you see out, find out how many Silver are Sun, Body and Fender Repair, Shop and Save, Walnut Hill Union Town, the Somerset Trust Company, the Catholic War Veterans, both 1669 in Hopwood, Novacare Rehabilitation, Jimmy Johns in Union Town, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law, Peachin's Pharmacy, Casey's Sports Cafe, MR Transit, Ford of Union Town, and by Mama Ruka's Pizza Shop. Now stay tuned for high school baseball action here on WMBS, the Triple Live High School Sports Network and Facebook Live. From Ross Memorial Park here at Washington and Jefferson, time for high school baseball action here on WMBS, the Triple Live High School Sports Network and Facebook Live. Tonight, the Laurel Highlands Mustangs take on the Trinity Hillers. We're just about set to get this game underway. Gary, our abbreviated pregame show being brought to you by the Sprouse Insurance Group and insurance agent David Hughes. They'll get you ready for the game. They're located at 217 West Main Street in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-9812 for the Sprouse Insurance Group. Our live video stream tonight, courtesy of Mama Ruka's Pizza Shop and m &R Transit. And you have the batting lineup. For the Mustangs, Gary. I do. Leading off for the Mustangs is shortstop number nine, Ty Sankovic. Batting second, the left fielder number 17, Carson D'Amico. Batting third, number 18, Alex McLean. He will be at first base this evening. In the cleanup spot and pitching, number 22, Braden O'Brien. In center field, number 11, Ben Diamond follows him. Frank Kula moves up in the lineup. He's number three, and he will be playing second base. Joe Chambers will be playing third base. He wears number one. C.J. Gask is in right field. He wears number two. And our catcher, number 10, Patrick Cavanaugh, in the ninth spot. And the first pitch to Ty Sankovic. Misses there for ball one defensively for Trinity. Logan Daniels in left. Zach Thornburg in center. Cam Schoenfield in right. Next pitch in there for a strike to even up the count at one and one. Zach McLenathan playing third, Braden May playing short, Matt Robaugh playing second, and Jeremy Sikora playing first, Luke Laycock catching, and Caden Hathaway pitching as that one sent foul by Ty Sankovic, a junior shortstop coming in with a 267 average and an RBI so far this season for the Mustangs, counting out one and two. All of a sudden, it got bright out here, Brian. Yes. A little had, chilly, though. Had some rain showers earlier. One, two pitch misses off the plate. Evens up the count at two and two. And the sun has been in and out of the clouds all day long around southwestern Pennsylvania. But on this artificial surface, no matter what kind of rain they got earlier in the day, we're playing baseball as Sankovic chops another one foul there on the right side. Count remains even at two and two. And Ty Jr. has uh, had a stellar career for the Mustangs already. Now the 2-2 two -two once again from Hathaway. Catches the inside Ooh. corner for strike three. Sankovic did not like that call. And the Mustang coaching staff a little unhappy as well. That ball was in the dirt. I <laughs> kind of scooted across the uh, turf and uh, called a strike. Jeez. Hillers will take it any way they can get it. Now Carson D'Amico at the plate, batting second, left fielder, first pitch from Hathaway off the plate, count at 1-0, just the second appearance on the mound for Hathaway so far this season, has not factored in any decisions, just pitched one inning so far as D'Amico sends another one foul, gave up two hits, one run, it was earned, two strikeouts and one walk for Caden Hathaway. D'Amico off to a nice start at the plate for the Mustangs, batting 462 with five RBI, senior left fielder. 0-1 from Hathaway. Swing and a miss from Carson. Count now at 0-2. Game time temperature around 40 degrees. Actually feels a little bit cooler with that breeze blowing in. Mustangs in their way blues, red numbers, gray pants. 
And D'Amico with a rope there into left field off a of one hop. Logan Daniels with a relay into Braden May and a one-out single for Carson D'Amico here in the top half of the first inning. A little bit of an off-speed pitch there by Hathaway, and D'Amico waited on it nicely and just ripped it into left field. Now Alex McLean coming to the plate, senior first baseman, batting 429, has driven in a run here on this young season. And now Hathaway working from the stretch. A little glance over his shoulder. First pitch low and outside. Gets away from Laycock. That will allow Carson D'Amico to get down to second. It's a wild pitch. A lot of room behind home plate here at the complex Ross Memorial Park. Just adjacent to the Wild Thing Stadium here in Washington, Pennsylvania. Home of the Washington and Jefferson presidents, there's a foul tip back. Of course, they play a lot of WPIL and PIAA play-in games here as well. The Mustangs were here for a PIAA play-in game against Montour last year. Fell to the Spartans and were unable to make the state playoffs after advancing to the WPIL semifinals. Of course, the Mustangs back in 2019. Of course, we did not have a 2020 season. Played in a WPIL 5A title game against Shaler. Another one there on the corner of the plate called a strike. Now one and two to Alex McLean. I think it's an advantage playing some games here early on in the season at this field and another nice breaking ball there from Hathaway. His second backwards K here in the top half of the first inning. And now two down with D'Amico still on second and Braden O'Brien coming to the plate. That was a beautiful pitch there by Hathaway. Just on the inside part of the plate, fastball just froze McLean and he knew it. Now Braden O'Brien coming to the plate. First pitch from Hathaway, fastball called strike 0-1. Brian Morozak along with Gary Frankhauser, Tony Hanola behind the camera tonight on our Facebook Live video feed. Nick Barczyk back inside our WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Studios. Nice to have you along with us for a Friday night of high school baseball. 0-1 on the way, a little one-hopper in front of the plate. Good block there from Luke Laycock. Sophomore catcher for Trinity. We didn't mention that uh, Hathaway's a freshman out there on the mound. Mustangs coming off of a Sweep of Ringgold this week after losing their opening series of the season to West Mifflin. Trinity lost a pair of conference games against Bethel Park. Bethel Park is a solid program. Laycock took one in the throat That's there. what I was, was going to ask there, Gary. Is he a little nicked up? Yeah, well, that's a good sportsmanship and everyone giving him an opportunity to shake it off. But having been there myself, that's uh, a brutal thing. and It's really hard to uh, shake that off. But they have that new catcher's mask with the flap down below the mask it is to protect that but that ball was in the burnt in the dirt and just kind of came right up underneath caught him I take it they didn't have that kind of protection when you played no <laughs> you have a helmet back there yeah we didn't even wear a mask eh? okay <laughs> <laughs> as you could tell <laughs> now the one one Hathaway glanced back at second, delivers an O'Brien, a well-hit ball to left center field on his horse, backing up and wow. diving and making the grab. Zach Thornburg for the third out of the inning, and that was not easy, Gary, out there in center field. What a play there by Thornburg. He had to go deep to his right side and actually laid out at the last minute to make a great catch and eliminate a long drive there to end the inning. We played a half inning scoreless here for Ross Memorial Park. Back right after this on the CR Prada Group. High School Sports Night. Going on now, it's the other Chevrolet. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $239 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is the GMS for well-qualified individuals at 10,000 miles per year. 24 months with 3,500 cash rate equity and must have a GM lease or non-GM lease in-household. Payment is for tax, title fees, and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends May 2nd, 2022. While supplies last, call dealer for all of the details at 724-929-8000. Bring forward to home construction season with First Federal of Greene County. First Federal's construction and improvement loans puts you in charge of your dream home project with all the tools you need. First Federal offers construction loans, owner-builder loans, and home improvement loans. With offices in Fayette, Greene, and Washington counties, your loan stays here. Visit with a First Federal loan officer today or apply online at firstfederalofgreene.com. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS number 458729. We're back here at Ross Memorial Park. Trinity coming to bat, and Gary has their lineup. 
Leading off for Trinity, number 29, Cam Schofield. He plays right field. Number 9, Matt Robaugh in the second spot. He's the second baseman. Number 23, Zach McClethahan. Say that one five times fast. He's the third baseman. Number 19, Caden Hathaway is on the mound, and he bats cleanup. Number 22, Braden May. He's the shortstop. Number 27, Jeremy Secor in the sixth spot. He plays first base. Number 10, Logan Daniels in left. Ty, let me get this one right. Yes, Ty Banco. He's the designated hitter. And he is batting in the eighth spot. And Luke Laycock is the catcher batting ninth. Defensively for the Mustangs, Carson D'Amico out in left. Ben Diamond in center. C.J. Geskin right around the horn. Joe Chambers at third. Ty Sankovic at short. Frank Kula coming off a game with a home run on Wednesday against Ringgold playing second. Alex McClain on first. Patrick Cavanaugh catching. And Braden O'Brien pitching for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. And O'Brien sent to go facing Cam Schofield. And the first pitch in there for a strike. 0-1-1 to Cam. So far this season, O'Brien an 0-1-1 record, 4.94 ERA. This is his third appearance. Has worked five and two-thirds innings, given up nine hits, five runs, four of them earned, struck out three, and, is, and has not walked a batter yet on the season and finds the strike zone again here to Schofield, who came in with a 500 average and an RBI sophomore right fielder for the Hillers. Good breaking pitch on that last attempt. 0-2 comes high that time with a breaking pitch. Down now moves to 1-2. Hiller's got an opportunity to play a couple of games down in Florida two weeks ago. Dwayne Lanzi, their head coach, Brad Yeoman, in his first year as the head coach of the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. 1-2 pitch, hit on the ground to third. Joe Chambers over there, long throw over to first off a of one hop. Secured by Alex McLean to retire Schofield 5-3 for the first down of the inning. McLean had to stretch for that and short hopped it. Got it in the glove long enough, kind of flipped it up casually, but uh, had it there long enough, so... No harm, no foul. Chambers to McLean for the first out. You probably get some truer bounces here off the artificial surface than you might get with the natural grass and dirt at a lot of fields, especially here in the early spring. Got to be careful, though, because it's wet, and that ball will skip on you, stay down when you think it might come up. Once again, O'Brien finds the strike zone on the first pitch to the freshman Matt Robaugh. Second baseman batting 333 with two RBIs. O'Brien back with a breaking ball looking for that outside corner. Did not get it. Evens up the count at 1-1. One and one. We saw in the last game Kravoski working exclusively from the stretch, and once again O'Brien's doing the same. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way, a little inside. In fact, you got Roba to move off the plate and almost out of the batter's box, counting out 2-1. and one. O'Brien again out of the stretch, 2-1 pitch on the way, and this ball hit in the air on the right side in foul territory. That'll even up the count at 2-2. Two and, two. and plenty of room here, Gary, in foul territory at Ross Memorial Park. Sure is, and 390 straight away. you got to believe it's about 320 down the lines. 2-2 two -two pitch on the way, another breaking ball hit high in the air on the right side of the infield. Frank Kula calling off the first baseman, Alex McLean, and Frank able to secure that one for the second out of the inning. So good pitching so far for O'Brien, keeping the Trinity batters off balance. Mustangs won't play again until next Thursday. Next week's their conference bye week. Still have a couple of days off early on in the week, and unfortunately for Laurel Highlands, the weather actually looks pretty good. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. First pitch there, chopped foul by Zach McLenathan. Zach, a senior, batting 400 with four RBIs. Third baseman for Trinity. Now one one now. O'Brien to McLenathan. The 0 one pitch on the way. Another breaking ball in there for a strike. 0-2. And Braden looking sharp early on. He saw action in relief on Monday against Ringgold, actually. Picked up the save against the Rams. Now coming back, getting the start here on Friday. Comes back with a fastball. That one hit opposite field right. Goes over the head of C.J. Gesk. Off the wall. Zach on his way to second. Relay coming in, and he'll have a stand-up two-out double for Trinity here in the bottom of the first inning. O'Brien came with a little off-speed pitch that time, and once again, McClethahan really waited on that and shipped it to the opposite field. Over the head of Gask, no chance for him out there as that was a line drive. That'll bring up now the freshman pitcher, Caden Hathaway. 
Hathaway has seen limited appearances at the plate this season for the Hillers. A little dinged up, we were told earlier on in the season. Takes the first pitch here for a strike from Braden O'Brien, but certainly nice to get this type of varsity action that Hathaway has seen as a freshman for the Hillers. Pitching and batting in the cleanup spot. Yes. O'Brien, another glance back towards second. Now will deliver the 0-1. Comes back with a fastball. Fouled off line drive. Look out there in the Mustang dugout. Everyone appears okay. They are ducking for cover, though, over there, Gary. They had to. That ball was rocketed right into the dugout. And this is certainly one of the nicer venues that we visit on a regular basis every spring. 0-2 oh, pitch on the way. Another breaking ball called strike three for Braden O'Brien. So the Hillers end up leaving Zach McLenathan stranded and we're scoreless after an inning from Ross Memorial Park, Laurel Highlands and Trinity here on the CR Parada Group High School Sports Night. Bad hair day, bad day at the office, bad day behind the wheel. Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sproul's Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprawlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. The WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Orthopedic and Spine Institute is open and their experienced providers are ready to care for you. Orthopedic and spine care spans a wide range of problems, from arthritis to joint trauma caused by injury or overuse. Hips, shoulders, knees, and backs are the most common areas where patients experience pain or impaired function. At WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital, they can treat orthopedic and spine problems with state-of-the-art care. Their board-certified orthopedic surgeons and specialists are well-experienced in the latest treatments for damaged and diseased joints. They offer everything from physical therapies to joint repairs and joint replacements. Whenever possible, the newest minimally invasive techniques are used to ensure quicker recovery, less pain, and less damage to surrounding tissues. To learn more about the newly opened Orthopedic and Spine Institute at WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital or to schedule an appointment, call 724-912-7533 or visit wvumedicine.org slash uniontown. WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital, the new us, here for you. Welcome back to Ross Memorial Park here in Washington, Pennsylvania. We're about to start the top half of the second inning. Leading off for the Mustangs will be Ben Diamond, number 11, the center fielder, senior center fielder for the Mustangs. Trying to get something started here in the second. Both teams leaving a runner in the first, and there is no score. Fastball in there for a strike at unofficially Hathaway with 15 pitches in the first inning. That would be number 16. Diamond senior center fielder batting a buck 82 with an RBI on this young season. That was low and in the dirt. One and one, the count. Tough to really get a true gauge of batting averages, Gary. Just four games in for the Mustangs. Absolutely. 1-1 one, one offering fastball, and there's a little looper over the second baseman's head. And in for a single for Ben Diamond, the right fielder out there. Cam Schofield thought about throwing it to first, but uh, he was playing very shallow, then thought better of it. So Diamond on with a leadoff single for the Mustangs, bringing up Frank Kula. Might be batting 300 now after that. Absolutely. <laughs> Kula with the huge home run the other day against Ringgold at Hutchison Field, really showing some pop in that bat. For sure, a good sign early on in the season. Turns to bunt and takes a strike. A little bit different bunting on artificial turf than it is in the long grass infields that you see throughout the high school fields. Trandy went down to Vero Beach, Florida. Played Plymouth White Marsh. A couple of games against Titusville and also Waynesburg. Good bunt that time and he might beat it out, but no. no. Good hustle down the line by Kula. Almost beat it out, but... A nice play there by Hathaway as he gloved it and kind of flipped yes, it over to first that? base. That's uh, a la Terry Mulholland. Could have thrown the whole glove. Jerry Sakura over there at first base making the catch. I mean, very heady for a freshman. Not looking like a freshman out there making a play like that. And I think probably 
facing nine out of ten pitchers around the WPIL. Cool probably beats that one out as that one hops away there from Laycock. Throw down to third. Not in time, but you get a kid like Hathaway, heady player, able to make that play over at first. Close play down there at third base as uh, Dom got a late jump on that pass ball that just kind of trickled out to the right side of first base line. But he is in there safely now with a two ball no strike count. There's a little dribbler down at third base line and they're going to play it. May not have a chance and that does get away from the first baseman and scoring will be Diamond from third. So a little dribbler down to third base and Zach McClenahan McClenathan took the opportunity to try to throw it over to first. Sakura could not make the play, but it was beat out in any event by Chambers. He'll get a single on that and an RBI. And a run scored for Ben Diamond, and the Mustangs strike first here in the top of the second inning. So with one out, runner on first now, one run in, C.J. Gass will come, and he's going to square around also for a long time and time called. CJ wasting no time to square around as if he was going to bunt. Could have been a fake bunt situation. He's not bunting this time, takes a strike. Our score ups tied into the scoreboard here at Ross Memorial Park and they're having an issue getting the one up there on the Laurel Highlands side. For wondering why it hasn't updated on our score hub. Well, they'll get it up there eventually. Fastball, little shot again over to the second baseman's head and scooting around second into third for the runner was Joe Chambers as he came all the way around from first. Single there by C.J. Gesk is the third hit of the inning. The Mustangs now set up with first and third and just one out. Patrick Cavanaugh to the plate. Batting from the number nine position. Junior catcher for Laurel Highlands. Just two plate appearances so far in the season for Kavanaugh. Good speed out there by Joe Chambers. Kavanaugh started the second game of a doubleheader behind the plate against West Mifflin early around this season. Choking up on the bat. He's going to turn around, and he does not bunt. Takes a strike, but stealing easily out there was C.J. Gask. He's in with the stolen base with... One strike now on Patrick Cavanaugh. And we're here in the top of the second inning. Patrick Cavanaugh, the fifth Mustang to bat here in the top of the second. One run already across. Inside for a ball. One and one now on Patrick Cavanaugh. A lot of room in the outfield as well, Gary. 390 to straightaway center here at Ross Memorial Park. A lot of pitches this inning for Hathaway. There's a high fly ball to right center field. And going back, going back, not going to make the catch in right field. Will allow at least one run to score. The second runner coming around. Will he score? He does. In the form of C.J. Guest, they had to hold up because that was a high fly ball to right center field. And the right fielder, Showfield, Showfield had a lot of trouble locating it, I believe. And he just at the last second had no chance to bring that in. Falls for a double for Patrick Cavanaugh. First hit of the season for Patrick. Two RBIs. Driving in Joe Chambers and CJ Gesk. Patrick now at second. And the Mustangs leading three to nothing and back to the top of the order and Ty Sankovic who struck out looking to lead off this game. But still just one out. Ty looks at a strike from the freshman right-hander who has thrown a lot of pitches this inning. Ty came in with a 267 average and an RBI for the Mustangs. Loan in the dirt. I say in the dirt facetiously. <laughs> that is it's not painted dirt. brown or it's <laughs> it looks like it dirt. looks brown. One and one. Sankovic in the brown turf again. Yeah, everything artificial here. Two and one. I think if it wasn't, we might not be playing baseball today. You're exactly right about that. Two one pitch, way outside, three and one. So now the Mustangs getting to Hathaway here in the second inning for a three spot so far. A three and one count. 
There's a strike throw in to second and back safely is Kavanaugh. Is Kavanaugh running out there or do they have a courtesy runner out there? He might be true. Well, let's I think see. Tristan McCoy's running. You're exactly right. Didn't see them didn't see him come in. 3-2 pitch to Sankovic. Ground ball foul down the first baseline. His dad couldn't make the play, though. Yeah. Give him an error. <laughs> shaking his hand. A little cold to yeah. try to grab that barehanded. 3-2 pitch again outside for ball four. So Sankovic works a walk. And it'll now be first and second with D'Amico coming to the plate. Four big RBIs for D'Amico in that game against Ringgold. Mentioned the cold temperatures, Gary. I'm dressed like I'm going skiing tonight. You are. You got the hat going. And I'm surprised you don't have the mittens on. They're in my pocket. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard to keep score sometimes with the mittens on. We might have a pitching change here for Trinity. Let's see. They're going to talk about it, that's for sure. Enter here one out, top of the second inning, three to nothing. Laurel Highlands leading the Trinity Hillers. Brian Morosek along with Gary Frankhauser. Tony Hanula behind the camera. I wish Jerry Dupay well, a little under the weather tonight. I'm sure Jerry's watching or listening. And Nick Barczyk back inside our WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital studios. And as the uh, Trinity Hillers talk about it on the mound, Sankovic sprinted over to talk to Coach Yeoman at third base. So... Talking a little strategy. And you'll have D'Amico. He's the seventh Mustang to bat here on the top of the second. Still just one out. So they do leave Hathaway in. You wonder for how long if the Mustangs get a couple more hits and bring home a few more runs here in this top of the second. Again, two already. Check that three already across here in this half inning. First pitch to D'Amico is low and outside for ball one. A lot of room on that right side as the Hillers try to hold the runner close at second. 1-0 offering. That's in there for a strike. I can call that one from here. Yes, good right pitch down, there from Caden. Right down the middle. Kamiko wanted to look at one, obviously. 1-1 one, one pitch. That's in. Ooh, got the corner call that time. So one ball and two strikes. These two schools met last year at Laurel Highlands. Mustangs won that game 14-4. They actually played in the same conference back in 2019. That one low and outside. Good block there by Laycock. Trinity won here 2-1. Mustangs won at home 15-0. That was the Laurel Highlands team that made it to the WPIL championship game at Wild Things Field. 2-2 two -two pitch looking is D'Amico at a beautiful pitch there by Hathaway for the strikeout. That's the third looking strikeout for Hathaway in the game. And that's going to bring up McLean with still two runners on first and second. And all three strikeouts came facing guys on the top of the order. One, two, three. Sankovic and McLean went down in the first. Now D'Amico here in the second. There's a shot up the middle. Un unable to grab it there was the shortstop as he kind of ate him up was Braden May. And we're going to have to give him an error yes. on that play because there could have been an easy flip to second baseman Roboff for the force out there. So that's going to load the bases for Braden O'Brien. The Mustangs batting around here in the top of the second inning. Ready three across and Braden with the table set in front of him. First pitch to him is in for a strike. Hathaway with good velocity, and he does mix in some nice breaking pitches, but the Mustangs have been on it this inning, and that's high and inside. Now, well, Braden nearly Duffy. had an extra base hit back in the first inning. Remember, he drove Zach Thornburg back off to his right and left center field, and Thornburg robbed him of an extra base hit. That one's inside also, two and one. No place to put O'Brien. Hathaway agrees with the sign, and time is called. I have to thank Tony Hanula for pinch hitting at the last minute tonight for Jerry Dupe. He does it all. Always available on call anytime we need him. 2-1 pitch. Breaking pitch in there for a strike. 2-2 two and two with two outs 
and three men on for the Mustangs, leading three to nothing here in the top of the second. A great opportunity to blow this game wide open. 2-2 pitch, that's way outside, and that's going to allow the runner to come in, and he's going to score. Ooh. Thornburg got taken out. He did. But he checked was, out Hathaway, excuse me, Hathaway. Hathaway but, it, I mean, really no choice there for the pinch runner the, for the Mustangs, number 16, Tristan McCoy. He slid nicely, and Hathaway was kind of laying on the plate, so he was in a collide. bad position. Yes. So the Mustangs do score the fourth run on a wild pitch. And the count went to three and two now on O'Brien as the other two runners move up to second and third. The count's going to be three and two when we come back. Again, O'Brien at the plates. You wonder how Hathaway feels right now, Gary, after taking a little shot there yeah. from McCoy at home. I think I'm glad and I'm hoping McCoy doesn't have steel spikes yeah. on. He could have really caused a problem there. Three and two, big pitch here for Hathaway. And chop foul, and Yeoman unable to make the play down there in the coach's box. And yeah, coaching staff struggling at, on the field here today with the ball retrievals. He whiffed on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Been a while since he's played, though. He was a pitcher. Here we go, three and two three again. Three and two pitch, and foul tip, but caught there by... Lecoq, and he ends the inning with a strikeout, so the Hillers do get out of it, but the Mustangs put four runs across on one, two, three, four, four hits and a walk. We'll go to the bottom of the second here on the Sea Harper Sports Afternoon on WMBS Trib Live Sports Network. Dinner's great. It's one of your top three favorite meals. You just don't want to have to make it. Well, with Jimmy John's, you don't have to. Whether you live in a sandwich delivery zone or head into the store, you can always get a freaky fresh sandwich. Click to order at jimmyjohns.com. Freaky fast, freaky good. Order online at jimmyjohns.com or call 724-437-6800 for delivery or curbside pickup. Jimmy John's, next to Walnut Hill Shop and Save. Did you know that you have a choice for your physical therapy provider? NovaCare Rehabilitation offers same-day appointments, and oftentimes you don't need a prescription from your doctor to see us. We will make sure that you are treated as an individual and will work directly one-on-one -on -one with you to help achieve your goals. You have tried the rest. Now try the best. NovaCare, Delaware Avenue in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-0556 to schedule your appointment today. Going on now at the other Chevrolet. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $239 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is the GMS for well-qualified individuals at 10,000 miles per year. 24 months with 3,500 tax rate equity. and must have a GM lease for non-GM lease in household. Payment is for tax penalties and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends May 2nd, 2022. Walk slide last. Call dealer for all of the details at 724-929-8000. Braden May will lead things off for the Trinity Hillers now trailing four to nothing. Braden O'Brien, the junior right-hander, posted to a 4-0 lead in the top of the second. First pitch in for strike one. Here in the bottom of the second inning, again, it's May, Sakura, and Daniels for the Trinity Hillers. Second pitch in there for strike two. Off speed, breaking pitch. Nice pitch there by O'Brien. May came into the game, 400 average, three RBIs, senior shortstop for the Hillers. 0-2 pitch, see if they can get him to chase here. And, whoa, almost gets a call in the outside corner, but ball one. Those have been close on that outside corner here early on on both sides. One ball, two strikes. Fastball just outside that time. Two and two to the shortstop for Trinity, Braden May. It's going to be interesting to see how long both O'Brien and Hathaway work with this being a non-conference game. See if the respective coaching staffs want to try to work in a few other guys here today. Just a bit outside again. O'Brien trying to work that outside corner. Just a bit outside. Runs the count full. This is the first non-conference game the Laurel Highlands has played this season. And high and inside. So after... Getting ahead 0-2, O'Brien walks Braden May. 
to lead things off here in the bottom half of the second. Trinity trying to answer the four runs the Mustangs put up in the top half of this inning. Well, more high school baseball next week, both Monday and Tuesday. We'll have the Uniontown Elizabeth Forward Series for you. Uniontown head coach Kenny Musco watching on our live stream. They're off to a good start, 3-1. and one. Throw over to first, back in safely is May. Elizabeth Forward off to a nice start as well. They won their opening two conference games over Greensburg-Salem, so that should be a fun series, Gary, next Monday and Tuesday. Sure will be. That ball's low and outside. Good block there by Cavanaugh. Does not allow May to advance. Throw over. May still standing on the base. O'Brien thinking he may have caught him leaning off early, but still standing on first. That one's low, so 2-0. and oh. Now to Sakura. He struggled a bit at the plate this season. Just 083, but again, the sample size, very limited. Here early on in the season, has a couple of RBIs, playing first base today for the Hillers. Shot towards the right side, and that's through for a single just past the outstretched glove of Kula. So two men up, two men on for the Trinity Hillers here in the bottom of the second. We've seen that a couple of times, Gary, those guys with showing low averages here very early on in the season. As soon as I mentioned it, they come through with a hit. Mentioned that for yeah. Diamond earlier on the other side for Laurel Highlands. As you said, it's hard to even gauge an no. average this early in the season. This gives us something to talk about. Fastball swing and foul tip into the glove of Kavanaugh for Logan Daniels. A lot of young guys on this team for Trinity. Daniels only a sophomore, playing left field here today. One for eight at the plate so far in the season is Daniels. Looked like he might have. It's a foul ball maybe, was it? No, he just bunted at it, so it got past Kavanaugh. No contact, so they do call it a strike. 0-2 is the count. Umpire explaining to the Hiller's coaching staff. That's not a play that can be appealed. I'm not sure that why the coach is asking, but that's not even an appealable call. He clearly did bunt through it. You could hear it from up here. But it was not a foul tip. No, I actually thought it was Nick off the bat. No, the no. runners advanced. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So it an 0 2 count. Yeah, yeah, maybe went off the umpire's mask I or something. I think Kavanaugh's else. Yeah. glove. Glove, yep, yeah, that's true. There's a high pop up out of play to the right side. So hanging in there is Daniels. We definitely heard something. Two men in scoring position. With nobody out here in the bottom half of the second, Mustangs on top, four to nothing. 0-2 pitch again, swing and a miss for a strike and hit the dirt, so they're going to have to. But they don't make the throw down. I'm not sure no, why. I... They ruled him mm, out. Yeah. He's going back to the dugout. Must have caught the ball before it hit the dirt. I'm not forget. sure what happened there either. Oh, he wouldn't have been out. So he, the home plate umpire didn't call him out until he went into the dugout. He would have been safe because the Mustangs did not make the throw down to first. Wow. The home plate umpire said he's now out while he's in the dugout. And wow. Now the, I was, yeah, it did hit in front of the plate, and I'm not sure why Kavanaugh didn't throw it to first, but clearly he could have been safe at first, and now a... Confusion has caused an out for Trinity. Dwayne Lanzi coming over to talk to our home plate umpire. It was a strikeout, no doubt about that, but it did hit in the dirt, and I'm not sure why Daniels didn't stay on first. And now Coach Lanzi coming out talking to our base umpire as well. Well, we're still discussing it. And once he goes back in the dugout, he gave himself up. Correct. It was odd to see him coming off the bag like that because no throw was ever made. And I was surprised Laurel Highlands defensively, even when Kavanaugh threw back to O'Brien, that O'Brien didn't notice the situation and throw over to first. And now you have to give the umpire some credit. He did not call him out no, until, he, until he went into the dugout. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah, he, re he didn't say anything. The umpire did not. I'm talking to Tony and I. We've seen a lot of things in baseball, but yeah. that's kind of a 
very unusual one. There's a swing and a miss at Ty Banco, the designated hitter who's now at the plate with one out and runners at second and third. Just when you think you've seen it all, something like that happens. 0-1 pitch, swing and a miss, little tip that time, so foul tip for an 0-2 count now. Now, Gary, recap that last situation. A couple of folks on Facebook saying they missed it and want more of an explanation. The guy's on second and third with nobody out. One out. No, nobody, no, there out, there was nobody, nobody out. out. Right. Yep. Pitch was in the dirt and swung on and missed for a strike three. There's a ground ball to short. Sankovic on to first for the out. He caught him safe as he came off the bag. Wow. Umpire called him safe, so McLean came off the bag when he really didn't need to come off the bag. And runners are safe at first and third now, and one run in for he Trinity. Called, We're going to call that E3 with them coming off the bag. Yes, back. absolutely. So Braden May scores, and it's now 4-1, to one, and Coach Yeoman's out to talk things over. But in that last situation, Gary was explaining no throw was made after the ball was in the dirt from Kavanaugh over to first. The runner in that situation, Logan Daniels, initially went down to first, then went into the dugout. No call was made on the field, and then Daniels was not called out until he went into the dugout. So that was the only out of the inning, and now we're at first and third with one out. At the plate, the ninth man in the order, Luke Laycock. And a run across now for the Hillers. They're back to within 4-1. to one. Very unusual inning. There's a looper into right field. Gesk has an eye on it. He'll make the catch, but now tagging from third and coming in for the second run will be Sakura. I'm sorry, that's, uh, yeah, that is Sakura. So he'll score the second run, and the Hillers have... Cut the Mustang lead in half. A sack fly RBI for Laycock, his third RBI in the season. Sophomore came in with a 300 average. Now the Hillers back to within two of Laurel Highlands at 4-2. to two. Brings up the leadoff hitter, Cam Schofield. Grounded to third his first time up. Not much of a lead out there at first base for Banco. Ball high and outside for a 1-0 count. O'Brien with the pitch on the outside corner that time gets the call 1-1. One one. So a lot of pitches for Hathaway in the top of the innings and again a lot of pitches for O'Brien here in the bottom of the inning. And you, as you said, it's probably going to be interesting to see how far the coaches let these guys go as that pitch is high and outside for ball two. Showfield, the sixth hiller to bat here on the bottom of the second inning. Two balls, one strike, two, men, two outs, and a runner on at first. Two runs in. Whoa, just outside that time. Uh, Brian wanted that call. Three and one. Mustangs now four runs on four hits. Trinity, two runs on two hits. Three one count, throw over. Banco not very far off. Dives back in safely. O'Brien looking to end this inning right here. That's high and outside for ball four. It won't end yet. And that's going to bring up Matt Roball. Hit a high fly ball that was caught in the infield by Frank Kula, his first time up, the second baseman. And the Mustangs now facing another runner in scoring position in the form of Ty Banco and O'Brien. Trying to get out of it. Robo only a freshman, came in with a 333 average and two RBIs. There's a high fly ball again in the infield. Kula going out. Zankovic calling for it from the shortstop position to make the catch and end the inning, but not before Trinity puts up two to cut the lead in half. It's 4-2 to two, Laurel Highlands as we go to the top of the third. C. Harper Sports Night on WMBS and the Trib Live High School Sports Network. I'm attorney Rob Harper, and I'm happy to be joining Bill Martin and Trip Radcliffe at Radcliffe Law in Uniontown. I grew up in Uniontown and chose to make Fayette County my home. I also represent the county as an assistant district attorney, and I know my way around a courtroom. If you are hurt in an accident, buying or selling a home, need assistance with an estate or will preparation, 
call me at Radcliffe Law, 724-439-3939. The initial consultation is free. Radcliffe Law, making the law personal. The Catholic War veterans post 1669 at Hopwood are proud supporters of local high school sports. For more information on the programs that the Catholic War veterans provide, log on to the Catholic War veterans website at www.cwv.org. You can also visit the Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 on Facebook or phone 724-437-3088. That's 724-437-3088 for the Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 in Hollywood. Bad hair day, bad day at the office, bad day behind the wheel. Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sprouls Insurance Group, 724-437-9812, or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. Ben Diamond leading off the top half of the third for the Mustangs, ahead 2-0. Now make it 2-1. and one. Caden Hathaway starting his third inning on the mound for the Trinity Hillers. The Mustangs scored four runs, sending nine men to the plate back in the top of the second inning. Time called as uh, Coach Sankovic was not in his box, and ha the umpire telling him he has to get in his box. Hathaway, once we resume, finds the strike zone again, 2-2 two and two now to Ben Diamond, who singled to right field and scored her on last time up and now gets hit by a pitch. Takes one for the team there as he kind of ducked and just took it right in the back of the shoulder. Mustangs will take it and that'll bring up Frank Kula, who sacrificed first time up. Good as a hit there. Yep. Junior second baseman came in with a 500 average, a homer and four RBIs. Dinger coming on Wednesday down at Hutchinson Field in Hopwood. Sacrifice last time up with a beautiful bunt down the first baseline. Almost beat it out. He's going to try that again. Looks Pulls at a back, strike. Yep. Pitch in there for a strike. Count at 0-1. Joe Chambers in the on-deck circle for the Mustangs. Now time called. And some warnings to the dugout now. From the home plate umpire, the Mustang bench has been warned. Wow. I didn't hear no. anything, but apparently the, the umpire too, yeah. did. <laughs> we have the headphones on, too. Throw over to first, and we're positioned right behind home plate, just to the right of where the camera's located at. Tony said he heard some stuff down there. Oh, you didn't hear anything. Okay. Whatever it was, the umpire heard it. Yes. A one pitch, and therefore a strike now, and two to Frankie Cool. I've always found that to not be a productive thing, to upset the home plate umpire. No. <laughs> and both coaches have had numerous conversations with him. So far in this game, we're still only in the top of the third inning. 0-2 pitch on the way, a little high and outside, now 1-2. and two. And Of course, you have to wonder if you get him upset a little bit and you get those close balls and strikes Absolutely. on the outside That's corners of the plate, it's only human to maybe react the other way. One, two on the way. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Big cut there from Frankie Cool, but he goes down. First out here in the top half of the third. Frankie was going for the downs there. He took a big rip at it, but came up empty for the first out. Now Joe Chambers coming to the plate. RBI infield single last time up and scored a run for the Mustangs. It's a little instruction from Mustang head coach Brad Yeoman coaching third. Hathaway out of the stretch. He'll look over at first, and he'll step off. Ben Diamond over there, let off the inning, getting hit by a pitch. Now Chambers, only his fourth at bat of the season, showing bunt, pulling back, pitching there for a strike, counted 0 and 1. Good pitch to bunt there, right down the middle. If Joe was supposed to bunt it, he should have. Most of the guys with the long sleeves on here today as well with the temperature dropping into the 30s and Chambers could be a double play ball here made a robot for one back to first and a little low going over to Sikora it was off out. the bag and Chambers safe at first. So this goes to the fielder's choice, 6-4, second out of the inning with C.J. Guest coming to the plate. So, so far an efficient inning for the Trinity Hillers coming off that four-run second inning. 
They did post two of their own, so they're right in it. C.J. Guest, single to right center field. Stole a base and scored a run last time up as they check Ben Diamond. Oh, check that. That's uh, now Joe Chambers over at first. Of course, Diamond was retired over at second. Chambers about a two-step lead off first. And the pitch a little inside there to C.J. Guest, who came in with a 250 average and an RBI. Junior for the Mustangs. He's also seen some time as a courtesy runner when he hasn't gotten starts, and he'll bloop this one in a shallow center. Might drop it. Will, a little one-hopper, then off the, off the glove of Zach Thornburg, deflecting over to Logan Daniels, the left fielder. It goes a single for C.J. Gesk, and the Mustangs with two on and two outs here in the top of the third. C.J. two for two, and that's going to bring up Cavanaugh, who hit the long double to right field his first time up. Ended up picking up two RBIs, and his courtesy runner, McCoy, ended up scoring a run. First pitch here to Patrick, swing and a miss. Pitch was actually low and outside, counted 0-1. Now Hathaway again from the stretch, glance back at second, 0-1 pitch on the way, looking for the corner, and he gets the corner, counted 0-2. In a hole now, Cavanaugh needs to protect, keep this inning going. Choking up on the bat, 0-2 pitch, just missed, 1-2. Hathaway thought he had it. I did too. A little breaking pitch that almost caught the inside part of the plate. Now the 1-2 to Patrick Cavanaugh. On the way, another breaking ball. Patrick, a rip, gets past Zach McLenathan into left field. Scoring on the play is Joe Chambers. The Mustang lead now up to three at five to two. Third RBI for Patrick Cavanaugh. That was ball was hit hard down the third base line. McLenathan had a sh shot to catch that on a fly. Chose to short hop it and did not make the play. But Tough play, no doubt about that. Now the top of the order in Ty Sankovic. Sankovic, his third plate appearance of the game. Struck out looking back in the first inning, walked in the second inning. Two on, two outs, one already across. And Sankovic, a little chopper going back to first. Hathaway there, dropped the ball, able to regain, flip it back to first to Jeremy Sikora to retire. Ty Sankovic, 1-3 to end the inning. The Mustangs get another run. They lead Trinity 5-2, moving to the bottom of the third here on the C.R. Parada Group. High School Sports Night. Uniontown Detailing offers an all-inclusive auto care experience. Services include full auto detailing, professional ceramic coating, window tinting, undercoating, paintless dent repair, and more. Uniontown Detailing has moved to a new location on 255 South Mount Vernon Avenue in Uniontown. Stop by and check them out today. Best of luck this season to all local teams from Uniontown Detailing. Just as your local State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home and auto. And guess what you'll get? That's right, good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman is your go-to agent in Uniontown for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try to combine home and auto today. State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman will help you mix and match things perfectly. Call 724-592-6308 for your surprisingly great rates. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Attorneys from all over the state and nation advertise in southwestern Pennsylvania for personal injury and workers' comp cases. But most of them send their assistants to do the legwork. You might not even meet your attorney until your first hearing. We're local attorneys, Davis and Davis. We meet directly with our clients, including free consultation. There are no fees until you receive money on your case. If you've been injured, call Davis and Davis, representing you and your neighbors yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Call 724-437-2799. We're back here at Ross Memorial Park. Brian Morosek and Gary Frank Hauser. Tony Hanula behind the camera on our Facebook Live video feed. Nick Barcheck back inside our WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Studios. And the first pitch hit right up the middle in a center field for Zach McLenathan. And the Hillers with a leadoff single here in the bottom of the third. Good shot there by McLenathan. He just took that fastball right back up the middle. O'Brien had a shot at it, but unable to flag it down on the mound. And that's going to bring up Caden Hathaway. 
the pitcher. Zach's now two for two in this game. Yes, he is. We had a couple of questions asking about the innings not showing up, and we have no control over that, Gary. Well, it is the third. It is we'll the third keep, inning, we'll, bottom of the we'll third. We'll let everyone know that. I'm actually seeing if I can do it manually to get the innings to show up. We'll see. Nonetheless, count 1-0 and here to Caden Hathaway. Pitch was low. Runner going. Throw down a second. Close He's play. Out. And out at second is Zach McLenathan. So McLenathan caught stealing. And one out now recorded here in the bottom of the third. Two to four. Nice throw right on the bag there by Cavanaugh. And Kula taking the throw and making the tag. And a dejected McLenathan walking off the field. And give Cavanaugh a lot of credit there for the throw as well, Gary. Ball was not a good pitch. It was low for ball two, and he had to dig it out and make a throw. Count now 2-0 to Hathaway. Pitch there just off the plate. Count now 3-0. Not sure I uh, understand the strategy there to run with nobody out. 3-0 pitch on the way. A little low for ball four. So the Hillers get a base runner back anyways, and Hathaway, we'll see if we get a courtesy runner here for the pitcher with Braden May coming to the plate. We do not. Hathaway going to run for himself. And Braden May walked and scored a run last time up. Senior shortstop came into the game with a 400 average and three RBIs. Mustangs up 5-2. to two. Bottom of the third, breaking ball there from O'Brien misses. And a count at one and up. Mustangs looking for the double play ball in this situation. Get a lot of hard rollers on this artificial surface as O'Brien finds the strike zone. Count now even at one and one. Five runs on six hits for the Mustangs. Two runs on three hits for the Trinity Hillers. Mustang outfield straight away. O'Brien throw over to first. Head first slide back safely there for Hathaway. Lights on, sun behind the clouds. 1-1 one, one pitch low, and it hopped down in front of Kavanaugh. Still makes a throw and a pretty good gun down to second, but safe there is Hathaway. And now Hathaway in scoring position. Hiller's down three at five to two here in the bottom of the third inning. One thing you do not see in the high school game is this shift that you see in Major League Baseball now, but it kind of happens by accident when there's a runner on second yes. base because the second baseman is pretty much right behind second base trying to hold the runner close. We saw a hit occur in the Laura Highlands ring gold game because of that on Wednesday. Got out three and one as O'Brien missed there on the two one. Now the three one pitch on the way and this ball chopped on the left side. Sankovic there, tough throw over to first in time. Good catch there from McLean over at first. Retire May who did not like the call. Over at first base, Hathaway does advance down to third. So a great play there by Sankovic. Had to throw from his knee going into the hole to his right and kind of got it over there with not much force, but in time for the out. Now two away. And Jeremy Sikora at the plates. O'Brien's first pitch to Sikora, a little low for ball one. Sikora singled a right field and scored a run last time up. Hathaway advanced around a third on that ball in the hole. So he's in better scoring position. Next pitch to Sakura inside, counting out 2-0. And next week we'll have the series between Elizabeth Ford and Uniontown for you. We're at EF on Monday, back at Bailey Park on Tuesday. Both games scheduled to get underway at 4 o'clock. 2-0 pitch on the way, and this ball hit high in the air, right down the right field line, and moving over and making the grab, C.J. Gesk for the third out of the inning. So the Hillers end up leaving Hathaway stranded. It's still 5-2 Laurel Highlands moving to the top of the fourth here on the C.R. Brada Group High School Sports Night. 
general dentist Dr. Edward L. Wietek Jr. treats children, teens, and adults of all ages. Dr. Wietek performs all phases of general dentistry, including crowns and bridges, partials, full dentures, comprehensive orthodontics, root canals, bonded white fillings, dental implants to replace missing teeth and to stabilize loose-fitting dentures, and comprehensive exams and cleanings. Dr. Wietek's office is located on the National Pike, one mile west of the mall on Route 40. Call him up at 724-439-1616 for Dr. Edward L. Wietek, Jr. UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff for residents of the community, treating sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, brains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. They treat you efficiently and safely by taking all necessary precautions while disinfecting the clinic regularly. All insurance accepted. Experienced therapists. Convenient location and hours. Part of the community. Call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access 724-437-7500. On the go? No time to stop? That's when you'll love Peach and Pharmacy's free prescription delivery and mail service. Call 724-626-9600 or send a message and ask about free prescription delivery and mail service. Next time you have a prescription to get or need a refill, have it delivered to your home or workplace. Prescription at your doorstep from Peach and Pharmacy. Peach and Pharmacy, your local pharmacy. We're back here for the top of the fourth inning. Some defensive changes for Trinity. Cole Carl, number 35, into the game in right field, replacing. No, he's actually going to play third base. Oh, third base, and okay. McClethahan goes to right I field. Gotcha. I got you. I missed In place that. of Schofield. So Cole so Carl put, playing third. And McClethahan going out to right. So put Carl in Schofield's batting spot. And still on the mound for Trinity is the freshman, Caden Hathaway, getting some great varsity experience here against the Mustangs and leading off for the Mustangs will be Carson D'Amico. Carson one for two with a single in the first, struck out in the second. First pitch to him is in for a strike. Off-speed breaking pitch on the inside part of the plate for strike one. And Mustangs are already making their way through their lineup for the third time here in the top of the fourth inning. High and inside, some chin music for Carson D'Amico. Reminder, stay tuned after the game for our post-game show brought to you by State Farm Agent Lauren Yeoman. We'll recap this one and preview the action next week. One and one, another breaking pitch. Nice pitch there for Hathaway. He likes that off-speed breaking pitch that catches the inside part of the plate. And it's only a freshman. Here's the pitch. That's low and outside. Good scoop there by Luke Laycock. 2-2 two -two now as he winds and delivers. High ball three. So full count now to Carson D'Amico leading off here on the top of the fourth. Mustangs on top, 5-2. to 3-2 two. Two pitch. Fouled back. D'Amico, McLean, and O'Brien do up for the Mustangs here on the top of the fourth inning. Lights are on here yes. at Ross Memorial Park, and good thing because the overcast has it pretty dim out here. 3-2 pitch, ground ball to third, and that's foul. Might have to have Tony up the uh, filter in the camera here in a little bit. Yep. Making his way back to home plate now, Carson D'Amico. He sprinted down the first base line, thinking that had a chance to be fared on the third base line, but just foul. And get well wishes to Jerry Dupay, our normal camera guy for all of these Laurel Highlands broadcasts here in the spring. Hope to have Jerry back with us next week. A little under the weather today. 3-2 pitch, good save there by D'Amico as he just caught the end of that, caught the ball with the end of the bat, I should say. Just kind of, excuse me, stuck the bat out and fouled it back. Now for teams like Trinity here, Gary, playing on this artificial surface, they really have an opportunity to play a lot more games than a lot of other area teams around the spring. Good at bat there for D'Amico as he kind of fought that one off on the inside part of the plate, pushes it into right field for the leadoff single. He's now two for three in this game. And you mentioned coming off a four RBI performance against Ringgold on Wednesday. It's really been a big week for Carson, continuing again tonight. 
Alex McLean comes to the plate. He's 0 for 2 on on an error in the second inning. Trying to get things going from his third spot in the lineup. First pitch, low and outside. Good block there by Laycock. Of also have to thank our studio producer, Nick Barcheck, back inside our WVU Medicine Union Town Hospital studios. We'd like to meet Nick. He'll actually be at the Mon Valley Home Show, Gary, tomorrow. The Ross Drave Rice Gardens from 12 to 2. Hi. Right, say hello to Nick. Hathaway's wondering where that one was. He kind of looked in and gave a little bit of a look. So 2-0 and now. I think Nick will be signing autographs. He'll have a lot of giveaways, WMBS t-shirts, lottery tickets, all kinds of good stuff, even some pirate tickets. 3-0. and oh. I don't think he'll be kissing babies, but <laughs> maybe. Weather doesn't look so hot over the weekend <laughs> as well. Great opportunity to make your way out to the home show. 3-0 pitch. That's in there for a strike. Throw down to first. Nice nap throw, but not in time as diving back in was D'Amico. Mustangs played it four in the top of the second. Trinity came back with two in the bottom of that inning. Mustangs added a run in the top of the third. We're working here in the top of the fourth. Nobody out. One runner on. 3-1 pitch. A shot in the hole, and that's going to be a single for McLean. No doubt about that one as he rocketed it into the hole between third and short for a single. Back-to-back -back singles to start the fourth inning for the Mustangs. Going to bring up Braden O'Brien. Mustangs now eight hits in this game, and that might be it for Caden Hathaway. Infield coming in, second visit to the mound this game. For Dwayne Lanzi, yeah. the head coach. And that's going to be it. So we'll take a timeout. Pitching change here for the Hillers. Mustangs up 5-2 to two here on the Sea Operata Group High School Sports Night. Are you looking for a rewarding career? M&R Transit is now hiring van drivers. Van drivers must be 26 years of age, have a valid driver license, and a clean driving record. Van drivers must be able to obtain all clearances. For more information, call 724-439-3164. That's 724-439-3164 or apply in person at m and Transit, 253 South Mount Vernon Avenue. m and Transit wishes the Laurel Highlands Mustangs good luck. Uniontown Detailing offers an all-inclusive auto care experience. Services include full auto detailing, professional ceramic coating, window tinting, undercoating, paintless dent repair, and more. Uniontown Detailing has moved to a new location on 255 South Mount Vernon Avenue in Uniontown. Stop by and check them out today. Best of luck this season to all local teams from Uniontown Detailing. Fayette County Recorder of Deeds, John Marietta, would like to wish the Laurel Highlands Mustangs, the Uniontown Red Raiders, and all of our local high school baseball teams the best of luck this season and invite you to listen to his show every Tuesday at 315 here on WMBS. Aiden Metz is the new pitcher for the Trinity Hillers, Gary. Looks like Caden Hathaway is going to exit the game. Yes, we thought for a moment he might be moving to another spot, but he was not, and on at first is... Alex McLean on its second is Carson D'Amico. Lead-off singles back-to-back -back for the Mustangs. Going to bring up Braden O'Brien to face Mets, the now senior. Now, the Hillers did not employ a DH in this game, so they may have an opportunity here if they don't want Mets to bat. We'll see when he rolls around back in the lineup. In the bottom of the fourth will be hitters 7, 8, and 9. Daniels, Banco, and Laycock do up. But the Mustangs trying to do a little damage here in the top half of the fourth inning with two on and nobody out. So we go from a freshman hurler to a senior hurler. And I don't have any numbers, at least in my stats so far this season, for Mets on the mound. Probably so is, if, he, if he's probably pitched, is we don't know first, about it. Probably is his first appearance. So Coach Yeoman's calling over O'Brien to give him a little idea of what he has in mind. O'Brien 0 for 2 in this game. Came in with a 273 average and an RBI. Junior getting the start on the mound for the Mustangs today. As Metz finishes up his last couple of warm-up tosses. The head coach for Trinity was giving us some instructions, but I couldn't quite make it out as to what he was saying. So Logan Daniels exiting the game. Who moved in to left? 
Was that Hathaway then out there in left? I think that is. And Caden Hathaway now out in the left. First pitch from Metz to O'Brien is outside for ball one. So Hathaway did go to left field, get some instructions from the Hope Plane umpire. We thank him for that. So Metz would then bat in Daniel's spot, correct? That's my understanding, unless, would, they, unless they do DH. DH, correct. And he would be due to lead off the next half inning. Low and outside for ball two. So 2-0 two and oh to Braden O'Brien. Runners on at first and second. Top half of the fourth inning. Mustangs on top. 5-2. to two, Nobody out. 2-0 oh offering now as he kicks high and misses outside for a 3-0 and oh count. Tough to come into the game, especially when you have the weather conditions like you have today. And you have Mets, the short sleeves there too, Gary. He doesn't seem to be bothered. No. It's a high kick from the stretch, and that's ball four. So four straight balls as he comes into the game, loads them up. For Ben Diamond. He's been on base in both plate appearances. Single to right field, scored a run in the second, hit by a pitch in the third. And it's going to be Ben's job to just put it in play somewhere. You'd hope it doesn't hit it down to third base as they are up on the grass. They're going to have a courtesy, courtesy runner, runner yep. for the pitcher. And that's going to be number five, Braden, Braden McKnight. McKnight. Harder to see McKnight not getting a start for the Mustangs. Been really a mainstay in the Laurel Highlands lineup. Here's the first pitch. Got a strike call. We'll call it on the outside part of the plate. <laughs> <laughs> Counted 0 and 1. He's like that outside part of the plate so far in this game. Second pitch, ground ball to short. That's in the hole. Really tough play. Got the out at second. Nice play out there at shortstop by Braden May to get the lead runner at second, but that does score a run, and Ben Diamond does his job, puts the ball in play, unable to make a play at home, so D'Amico scores the sixth run for the Mustangs. Second RBI of the season for Diamond, and now Frank Kula coming to the plate. Kula sacrifice him. back in the second inning, struck out swinging in the third. I give him a fielder's choice, and he's on at first. And O'Brien's the, well, I'm sorry, the courtesy runner which was Braden Mc McKnight. McKnight, correct, was out, was out at second. Out at second. Cool at the plate, looking for a big hit here. Mustangs now up 6-2 to two with D'Amico scoring in top of the fourth inning. For Diamond to take off here, get another runner in scoring position. Does not, and Kula looks at one high and outside for ball one. Diamond with a decent lead out there at first. Metz checks him, goes to the stretch. Metz has a very high kick on this delivery. No, now he slide steps into home and good move there. Swing and a miss for strike one. Saw Kula with a big time cut earlier when he struck out back in the third inning. Again, he had a home run on Wednesday against Ringgold down in Hopwood. So Metz with the runner on at first base has changed his delivery. Going with the quick slide to home and a swing and a miss by Kula again. Not One a nice ball cut. and two strikes. Yeah, good, good velocity. Good cut there by Kula. Good opportunity for the Mustangs to get another run here if they could put it in play with a man on third and just one out. Here's the pitch. That's inside for a ball. Snap throw down to third. Good idea, but aware down there at third and unable to pick him off was that's McLean down there at third. And they made the throw to second. Maybe had a chance of getting Diamond, but you'd have to think, though, in that situation, you'd likely have the runner from third going home. Right, and 2-2 two -two count now to Kula with two runners in scoring position and the force out at second eliminated. Especially with McLean having good speed down at third. Looper, old line drive and snared there by the second baseman, Matt Robaugh. That was not an easy play, especially no, with Robaugh playing up. He was way up, and that was a rope by Kula, but 
Snagged out of the air there by Roball for the second out, and the runners cannot advance. Now Joe Chambers at the plates. 6-2 lead for Laurel Highlands. Joe Chambers looks at ball one outside. One-zero pitch, high and inside for ball two. Our old buddy Nick Kraft watching tonight in Bobtown. Our old studio producer. Hello, Nick. Appreciate him checking in. Top of the fourth inning. Foul back right at us, and there is some gaps between. Yeah, you got to be careful there, Gary. Between the net back here, I might have had to grab that one. Gaps are right in front of you. I'm ready. <laughs> to bring your glove today. 2-1 pitch with two outs. Runners on second and third here in the top of the fourth. Mustangs leading 6-2, to two, and that's high and inside for ball three. Scoreboard has four in the second and two in the third, but that's incorrect. Correct. Should be four, four in the second, one, one in the third, third and one, one in the fourth. fourth. Correct, yep. Here's a pitch. And a high fly ball in the infield. Looks playable. Let's see who's going to call it. And it will be the pitcher, Mets, to make the catch right behind the pitcher's mound for the third out of the inning. So the Mustangs do strand a couple in scoring position. Do push one across. Now lead 6-2 to two as we go to the bottom of the fourth on the C. Harper Sports Night here on WMBS and the Trib, uh, Trib Live Sports Network. Good times and good food. It's all at Potter's Bar and Grill on Morgantown Street in Uniontown, family owned and operated. Potter's has been a staple in the Uniontown community since 1950. So get out of the house and make your next night out at Potter's Bar and Grill on Morgantown Street in Uniontown. Call them up at 724-438-9835. That's 724-438-9835. Or visit Potter's on Facebook. We'll see you at Potter's. Going on now at the other Chevy East. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $239 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevyEast.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is to GMF for well-qualified individuals at 10,000 miles per year, 24 months at 3,500 tax rate equity, and must have a GM lease for non-GM lease in household. Payment is for tax title fees and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends May 2nd, 2022. While supplies last, call dealer for all of the details at 724 2231 did you know that you have a choice for your physical therapy provider? NovaCare Rehabilitation offers same-day appointments, and oftentimes you don't need a prescription from your doctor to see us. We will make sure that you are treated as an individual and will work directly one-on-one -on -one with you to help achieve your goals. You have tried the rest. Now try the best. NovaCare, Delaware Avenue in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-0556 to schedule your appointment today. Bottom half of the fourth inning still on the mound for the Mustangs. Braden O'Brien deals a strike to the leadoff hitter here in the bottom of the fourth. This is number 25, Aiden Metz, who came on to pitch, and he is in the spot there for Logan Daniels, who came out of the game. That one's high for ball one, one and one. Metz's eighth plate appearance of the season. 0 for 5 at the plate, does have an RBI. So Metz... In that spot in the lineup, facing a 1-1 pitch. Curveball, beautiful in there for a strike. Logan Daniels in that spot, struck out swinging in the second inning. Mustangs on top, 6-2, to two, and there's a rip into left field, and that's going to be a clean single in front of the left field. Left fielder Carson D'Amico, so starting things off, the senior Aiden Metz. Every time I've said it, Gary, those guys looking yeah, for the first hit, struggling go. a little bit at the plate, they come through with a hit. Now Ty Banco at the plate. Banco was on on an error his first time up. One thing about it, there's a swing and a miss at a bad pitch outside, so heading Getting Banco to chase that time was O'Brien. And I guess it's kind of a 
Good thing that O'Brien is always from the stretch, doesn't have to adjust when there's runners on base. Misses outside and low that time, one and one. He wonder if he just gets comfortable in that position and figures, what the heck, there's probably going to be somebody on base at some point in the game. Might as well just start from the stretch. Figures he has more control. Big lead over there at first. Ground ball to short. Double play opportunity for the Mustangs. Get one on the first. Double play. 6-4-3. Good stretch over there at first base by Alex McLean on the throw from Frank Kula. It was a slow bouncer, but Sankovic able to flip it over to Kula. And now they're going to say he was safe. Well, the initial call was out. I think the home plate umpire is going to say McLean pulled off the bag. Let's see. Wow. Banco still standing at first. What do we got? He's out. That would a heck of an overrule. So he is called out on the double play. We had it play-by-play play done already, but we had to kind of, kind of back up on that yeah. and make the call. Coach told him to go back, stand on home <laughs> on first base till they talked about it. If he goes to the dugout, might be called out like we saw earlier. So Luke Laycock comes to the plate. He's the catcher with two outs now. Had a sack fly RBI last time up. There's a shot to right field and a base hit by Lake Laycock, and he is going to be on with two outs. So. That was a slow curveball that O'Brien fed up there. And Luke just waited on it, pushed it into right field for the single. And now Yeoman's going to want to talk it over with O'Brien. Cole Carl now coming to the play. This will be his first at bat of the game, batting in the spot that was occupied by Cam Schofield earlier. Schofield grounded out 5 3 in the first inning, walked in the second. Carl coming in with a 250 average and two RBIs. And that's going to be it for Braden O'Brien. We're going to see a pitching change for the Mustangs. We'll take a timeout. Laurel Highlands on top 6-2 to two as we work here on the bottom of the fourth here on the CR Parada Group High School Sports Night. Does your car sound like it's saying, Trade me in! Trade me in! Every time you start it up, well, go to Ford of Uniontown and trade it in. That's right. Your Uniontown Ford dealer is ready to assist you with a new or pre-owned car, truck, or SUV purchase. Board of Uniontown has all the deals, all the inventory, and they are ready to deal. It has never been a better time to buy a Ford. Service is their top priority. No matter where you purchase your Ford car or truck, Ford of Uniontown will be happy to service it for you. They offer Ford trained technicians, Ford certified parts and service, one year 12,000 mile parts warranties, and new state of the art service equipment. Call or stop in today to see the hometown service of Ford of Uniontown, Route 40 West across from Applebee. So listen to your car the next time you hear it say, Trade me in! Trade me in! Ford of Uniontown, Route 40 at the top of the hill. Bring forward to home construction season with First Federal of Greene County. First Federal's construction and improvement loans puts you in charge of your dream home project. With all the tools you need, First Federal offers construction loans, owner-builder loans, and home improvement loans. With offices in Fayette, Greene, and Washington counties, your loan stays here. Visit with a First Federal loan officer today or apply online at firstfederalofgreene.com. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS number 458729. Welcome back as we have the pitching change for the Mustangs. Noah Matthews comes on for the Mustangs. Number 23, a senior. Getting an opportunity to get on the mound here for the Mustangs. We're told that he is a stellar student also. Member of the high Q team for the Mustangs that did very well. He's a pretty good... Uh Fastball knuckle curve as well. There you go. First yep. time seeing him in a varsity game. He'll face Cole, Cur Cole Carl and throws a strike with a man on first. And two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Mustangs on top, 6-2. to two. And Carl's first at-bat of the game. Now playing third base for Trinity. Second pitch, ground ball, big hop over to the third base. Chambers throws it over and cannot make the play as that ball was in the dirt, throwing error on Chambers, and they're going to hold the runner at third as 
McLean had to chase that one down in foul territory over at first base, unable to grab that one. And we're going to rule that one as an error on third baseman Joe Chambers to allow Trinity now to have life with runners on second and third and two outs. And Matt Robaugh coming to the plate. Robaugh 0 for 2 today. Freshman came in with a 333 average and two RBI. You should have to think he's due. You gotta stop saying that, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> 2 lead for the Mustangs, but Trinity threatening. There's a foul ball to the right side for strike one. So Matthews, I'm sorry. Yeah, Matthews throwing strikes here so far. Coming in in relief of Braden O'Brien. 0-1 pitch. Curveball just misses inside, so Matthew showing the breaking pitch for the first time. Roball digs in with runners in scoring position and a shot into center field, but that's deep and going back and wow. unable to make the catch over the head of Diamond. That's going to score two and possibly be a triple for Roball as he's going to scoot in to third with a Two RBI triple here in the bottom of the fourth to play two and cut the lead now to six to four. Laycock and Carl scoring on the play. And once again, Gary, that trend continues. I'm dangerous up here. Sure McC are. McLenathan now coming to the plate. He's two for two, came in with a 400 average, four RBIs. Hiller's right back in this game, down two. With the runner down there at third, just 90 feet away for making it a one-run game. Been a fun one to watch tonight. Long way to go, still here at just the bottom of the fourth inning. Matthews with a change-up curve, gets the strike on the outside corner. That ball was hit hard by Roball. Diamond really had no chance for it, and that gets away from Kavanaugh. That's going to score another run for Trinity on a wild pitch by Matthews, and that makes it a one-run game, six to five. Ahead for a slide in safely there for Robaugh. So a triple, then a quick run coming across, and the Hillers back to within six to five of Laurel Highlands. It's high school baseball, yeah. we never have enough. And we talked earlier about all the space out there on the outfield as well. Again, 390 to straightaway center field, and you had Diamond playing a little bit up there in center, and on that last hit from Robaugh, just hit it over his head. Foul back to make it a one ball, two strike count now. Zach two for two with a single in the first and a, I'm sorry, a double in the first and a single in the third. Trying to make it a three for three day. One, two pitch, just outside. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bottom of the fourth, six to five now. There's a pitch, high and outside, three and two. So the Mustangs now with eight hits and Trinity with six. Have made this an interesting contest here in the fourth inning. A tough spot now for Matthews as we mentioned Really hasn't seen a lot of varsity action on the mound now. Only hanging on to a one-run lead at six to five. And that one's in the dirt for ball four. So good at bat there for Zach McLenathan. How long of a leash do you have on Matthews at this juncture of the game too? That's gonna bring up Hathaway. He struck out in the first and walked in the third. He's the seventh hiller to bat here in this bottom of the fourth inning. Three runs across. Good speed out there. But he was caught stealing his last time, I believe. He was uh, out there at first base. Ball one high and in outside. Tony tells me Caleb Yanoski warming up in the Mustang bullpen right now. That's low and inside, low and, I'm sorry, on the outside part of the plate, so 2-0. and oh. You have to think if Cat Hathaway gets a board here, Gary, you might see another pitching change here in the inning. Quite possible. 
Don't want to relinquish that lead at this point, although it's been trimmed to just one run. And kind of push that one. That's going to get away from Kavanaugh and have a 3-0 count. Runner now in scoring position to tie things up for Trinity. Done some cold games over the years. I think Tony was with me for that rainy cold game at Greater Latrobe a few years ago. Remember one Wally and I worked up at Southmoreland about 10 years ago. I remember playing in some snow games yeah. in high school. So. We used to play out at Cool Spring. They had that wooden fence around the outfield, and it would be like two feet of snow piled up <laughs> against the fence. Guys, guys start the season in first week in February. Here's a pitch. That's outside for ball four. So first and second now, back-to-back -back walks. Well, Brad's picking up his phone. I don't know if he's actually can phone the bullpen or not, but <laughs> he reached for it. They're going to stick with. Matthews for now. And Braden May will come to the plate. He walked in the second, grounded to short in the third. And there's a foul back, so Matthews ahead with a strike 0 and 1 here, trying to get out of this bottom of the fourth. May's the eighth Mustang to bat here in this half inning, came in with a 400 average and three RBIs. I think they're Hillers, too. They're Hillers, what did I say? Mustangs. <laughs> Hillers, they're Hillers. Game tying run at second, go ahead and run at first. Strike two, good fastball on the outside part of the plate. Need a strike here, get out of the inning and settle things down a bit. Really don't want to come down the middle at this point, make him chase something, and he does. Tags him out this time as the ball was in the dirt. So made him chase to get the strikeout to end the inning, but not before Trinity puts up three. It's now six to five. Laurel Highlands on top as we go to the fifth here on the C. Harper Sports Night on WMBS and the Trib Live High School Sports Network. Mama Ruka's Pizza Shop, located at 624 Barton Mill Road in Uniontown, is your prime place to enjoy local high school sports. Mama Ruka's is family-owned and operated where pride of ownership certainly shows. The Sampson family carries on the tradition of homemade pizza, salads, subs, and wings. Mama Ruka's is open Monday through Saturday, 4 to 10, for indoor-outdoor dining and takeout. Call 724-438-9066 or visit mamarukapizza.com for their menu. Going on now at the other Chevrolet. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $239 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is the GMS for well-qualified individuals at $10,000 per year. 24 months with 3500 cash rate equity. You must have a GM lease or non-GM lease in household. Payment is for tax, title fees, and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends May 2nd, 2022. While well, supplies last. Call viewer for all of the details at 724-929-8000. Did you know that you have a choice for your physical therapy provider? NovaCare Rehabilitation offers same-day appointments, and oftentimes you don't need a prescription from your doctor to see us. We will make sure that you are treated as an individual and will work directly one-on-one -on -one with you to help achieve your goals. You have tried the rest. Now try the best. NovaCare, Delaware Avenue in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-0556 to schedule your appointment today. The Mustangs with C.J. Guest, Patrick Cavanaugh, and Ty Sankovich do up here in the top half of the fifth inning. Mustangs lead at 6-5. to five. Laurel Highlands with four runs scored in the top of the second, added a run in the top of the third, and another in the top of the fourth. Hillers two runs in the bottom of the second, and a big bottom of the fourth inning, scoring three to get back to within one. First pitch to C.J. Guest, which is misses low and outside from Aiden Metz. Count at 1-0. and oh. Guest two for two today, pair of singles in both the second and third innings. Gask also stole a base and scored a run in that second inning where the Mustangs plated four runs. Metz comes back, finds the strike zone there to even up the count at one and one to CJ. Now the Mustangs need to try to answer the three runs put up in the bottom of the fourth. Good breaking ball there from Metz, finds the strike zone, one and two. For you Masters enthusiasts, Scotty Scheffler now leads at eight under, five stroke lead over Shane Lowry, Matsuyama, Swartzel, and M. One two pitch, that one golfed, but caught. No, yes, hanging on there at second. Matt Robaugh thought he lost it out of his glove for a moment, the way he reacted. But Robaugh, the second great catch he's had in this game, robbed 
Frank Kula back in the fourth inning of possibly an extra base hit. And there snags one away from C.J. Gesk. Beautiful play there by Robo. And as you said, he's made a couple nice plays that robbed the Mustangs. Now Patrick Cavanaugh at the plate takes the first pitch outside for ball one. I guess so much, Gary, for me going home and watching the Masters on my DVR after that. <laughs> <laughs> now the 1-0. Yeah. This is live feed. we got to yes. give the straight news. 1-0 on the way, and therefore a strike. Kavanaugh 2-for-2 two two with three RBIs. If you're working with Steve tonight, you would have been in big-time trouble. No. He does not like to have that information <laughs> when he's not watching. 1-1 one, one on the way. And that one hit high in the air and sent foul. I have to send happy birthday wishes to my niece, Lainey. I know she's not watching, but she turned 14 today. Maybe she And didn't. also, how about Tony's Tony daughter, didn't. Emily, turning 30 today? Yeah. Emily Anula. That just tells you how old he is. Yeah, I said that to him earlier today. All kinds Whoa. of birthday wishes. There's a called strike three on Patrick Kavanaugh. Wow. A little generous on that one, but you got to protect. And two up, two down here in the top half of the fifth. Quick two outs for Trinity after posting three in the bottom of the fourth, and they have a little momentum. Now Ty Sankovic at the plate, his fourth plate appearance of the evening for the Mustangs. Struck out looking in the first, walked in the second, grounded out in the third. He takes the first pitch here for ball one. And Metz has actually looked more confident here starting this inning, Gary, than he did on in relief of Hathaway in the fourth. Finds the strike zone to even up the count at one and one now to Sankovic, who came in with a 267 average and an RBI Mustang Junior shortstop. I would say he's due to put one in play somewhere. And he skills oh. opposite field left, just foul. Count out one and two. As Mets and the Hillers look for a one, two, three inning as they've recaptured a little momentum after plating three runs in the bottom on the fourth and Retiring the first two Mustangs here in the top half of the fifth. Sankovic likes to choke up on that bat. Does it here again. One, two on the way. Check swing. Did not go. They're going to appeal down to first. First base umpire says no. That's a hard call for a first base umpire with a left-handed hitter yes. to even see that. Counted two and two. Two, two on the way. Breaking ball. There Sankovic go. golfing that one opposite field left. And... You're continuing my trend from earlier, Gary. Hit for Sank, and the Mustangs are the base runner and two outs here on the top of the fifth. I'll do it for the Mustangs. You, you can <laughs> stop doing it for the Hillers. Just passing along facts. You guys mention that with free throws all the time with basketball. D'Amico at the plate. He's two for three. RBI actually scored two runs in this game. Or no, just one. Has stolen base back in the first. Scored a run in the fourth. Two for three, time call. So with two outs, the Mustangs have the meat of the order coming yep. up. So let's see if they can do something with two outs. See how Metz changes things here from the stretch. Misses on the first pitch. Count one and oh. And Trinity faced a very tough Bethel Park team earlier on this week. Lost both of those contests. Trying to get refocused for conference play again next week. And we'll throw down to first after the piss, pitch miss there. The count now at 2-0. Oh. Well, it's saying 45 degrees. Feels cooler than that. Well, yeah, a little bit of wind chill, but. I was guessing around 40. Now the 2-0 -oh pitch. Mets glances back. Pitch misses there. Now 3-0. Oh. To Carson D'Amico. Mustangs trying to get another. Runner on base. And the Hillers will actually be in Fayette County next week. Their series against Connellsville home and home. Falcons here on Monday. And they'll meet again on Tuesday. 3-0 pitch finds the corner of the plate. 3-1. and one. In our live video stream, courtesy of Mama Ruka's Pizza Shop on Barton Mill Road and M&R Transit in Union Town. Place to grab a bite to eat. Tonight, Mama Rukas. Always good. 3-1 now on the way. Off the plate for ball four. The Mustangs now two on, two outs. Here in the top half of the fifth, leading 6-5. to five. Brings up Alex McClain. He is one for three. 
Struck out in the first. Got on on an error in the second and singled in the fourth. Six runs on nine hits for the Mustangs. Five runs on six hits for the Hillers. As Luke Laycock and Aiden Metz have a little discussion here, catcher and pitcher. And McLean getting some instructions from Coach Yeoman down at third base. And McLean came into the game, 429 average in an RBI. Two outs here in the inning. Trying to come through and give the Mustangs a little bit of a cushion. Lead only at 6-5, to five. and McLean first That's pitch swinging the there. It will drop in a right center field. It's going to roll all the way back to the wall. McLean on his horse. One run comes across and scoring that Sankovic. Second run coming across. Throw down to third. Head first slide into third safely. So both Sank and Carson D'Amico score on the play. And the Mustangs lead right back up to 8-5. to five. Bring up some Bob Prince-isms. That was a bug on the rug with two out lightning. It's before my day. <laughs> Tony said I was a green weenie. <laughs> Nonetheless, it's an 8-5 lead for the Mustangs. And all this with two outs here in the top of the fifth. And now Braden O'Brien at the plates. O'Brien walked last time up, takes the first pitch here, low and outside for ball one. O'Brien flew out to Zach Thornburg in center back in the first inning, struck out swinging in the second before that walk in the fourth. Braden McKnight came on to run for him last inning. He'll pop this one up into right center field. McClendon under it and making the grab for the third out of the inning by the Mustangs. Tack two more on and lead it eight to five as we go to the bottom of the fifth here on the Sea Operata Group High School Sports Night. Just as your local State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home and auto. And guess what you'll get? That's right, good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman is your go-to agent in Uniontown for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try to combine home and auto today. State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman will help you mix and match things perfectly. Call 724-592-6308 for your surprisingly great rates. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. On the go? No time to stop? That's when you'll love Peach and Pharmacy's curbside pickup at Peach and Market in downtown Connellsville. Next time you have a prescription to get, let Peach and Pharmacy make it easy for you. Call ahead at 724-626-9600 or send a message. Let friendly curbside pickup keep you right where you want to be, in the driver's seat. Peach and Pharmacy. Your local pharmacy. Looking for the highest quality products at the lowest prices? Shop and save on Walnut Hill in Uniontown is the widest selection of brands and the freshest offerings around. They specialize in your family's grocery needs. Save big and sign up for the Shop and Save Perks card to get money-saving benefits and discounts on gas. Shop and save. Walnut Hill Road, Uniontown, opens 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. Working hard to offer you the best at Shop and Save because it's the just right thing to do. Back here in Washington, Pennsylvania, Ross Memorial Park. Brian Morozak along with Gary Frankhauser leading off this bottom of the fifth inning. Jeremy Sikora for Trinity first pitch swinging and caught on a line by the Mustang pitcher Noah Matthews. Nice reaction there by Matthews as he had to go down low. Just caught that right off the top of the turf on the mound. That would have been straight up the middle for a single, no doubt, for Sakura, but robbed there by Noah Matthews. Now Aiden Metz at the plates. Metz with a single to left field last time up. That was his first plate appearance of the game. Mustangs up 8-5 to five as we work here in the bottom of the fifth. Matthews first pitch low and outside to Aiden Metz. A couple other happy birthday wishes, Gary. Our good buddy Jimmy Capuzzi celebrated a birthday last oh, week. Yeah, Uniontown Sunday. basketball coach Rob Kesmarski also turned 50 last week. Wow. Swing and a miss. Happy birthday to those guys as well. Jim, a longtime sponsor with Peach and Pharmacy. Yes. Sir, does that that last stop set. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. High and inside. Yeah, hard to believe Coach K's 50. How about that? Yeah, that's, that is, I remember him playing in high school. Actually, 
excellent high school basketball player. He played a little high school baseball too, I believe. Uh, yes, he did. That one fouled off on the left side. Actually coached the Uniontown baseball team for a number of years. Up at Wharton Field. Yes. Frank Kula tells us Robbie was a catcher. Two and two. Matthews to Metz. Matthews winds, fires, pitch. Look at that outside setting corner. up yeah, out yeah. there, yeah. Didn't get the call. It's full Just three a and two. Little outside. Three balls, two strikes again. One out here in the inning. Hillers trail by three at eight to five, and this ball hit high in the air in foul territory on the left side. And will go out of play. One defensive change as well for the Mustangs. Braden McKnight now playing third in place of Joe Chambers. That switch made last half inning. McKnight will bat in Chambers' spot as well. And we'll see an at-bat in the top half of the sixth. It'll be Diamond, Kula, and McKnight now for the Mustangs. Now Mustang. count full here, three and two. Matthews to Metz. Pitch on the way, swing and a miss, strike three. So two up, two down here in the bottom half of the fifth. Settling in here in the bottom of the fifth, Noah Matthews gets the first two batters and that's gonna bring up Ty Banco, the designated hitter. Got a little rocky back in the fourth with a couple of walks issued after that robot triple. And Matthews has settled down as Gary said here in the fifth inning, and gets a swing and a miss there out of Banco. Mustang scoring in every inning except the first. Trinity with two in the second and three in the fourth. Eight runs on ten hits now for the Mustangs. Five on six hits for the Hillers. That one fouled off by Banco. Counted 0-2. Mustangs four in the second, one in the third, one in the fourth, two in the fifth. Hillers two in the bottom half of the second, three in the bottom half of the fourth. Matthews trying to get the first one, two, three inning on either side. And Bats have got the job done for both teams so far today. 0-2 pitch here. Breaking got ball. Call strike three. That's a 1-2-3 bottom half of the fifth inning. So the Mustangs lead it 8-5 to five after 5. We're back in a moment here on the C.R. Prada Group High School Sports Night. Going on now at C.R. Chevy East. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $239 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit cHarperChevyEast.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is the GMF for well-qualified individuals at 10,000 miles per year. 24 months at 3,500 tax rate equity. and must have a GM lease or non-GM lease in household. Payment is for tax title fees and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends May 2nd, 2022. While supplies last, call dealer for all of the details at 724-668-2231. When your car is damaged, the name to remember is Ted Silva and Son Body and Fender Repair. Repair, currently in their 59th year of providing quality, reliable service to the community, Ted Sub and Son offers complete collision service, minor to major repairs, frame and unibody repair, and glass installation. They will gladly blueprint your vehicle for repair, and they will work with your insurance company. With a paint booth that utilizes the environmentally friendly waterborne paint process, Ted Silva and Son not only cares for our community and our children, they care for our environment. Located on Atlas Road in Hopwood, it is the goal of Ted Silva and Son to alleviate the stress of an accident and assist you in any way possible. Family owned and operated for 59 years, call 724-437-2351 for Ted Silva and Son Body and Fender Repair, LLC. Proud to sponsor local high school sports. Welcome back. We're ready for the top half of the sixth inning. Leading off for the Mustangs will be Ben Diamond. He'll be followed by Frank Kula and Joe Chambers. And new pitcher in for Trinity again. This will be Matt Roball. He moves in from second base. The freshman fireballer, as we saw him warming up, has made some excellent plays out there at second base. And he's now going to get an opportunity on the mound. Moving over to second base is number 27, Jeremy Sakura. And on to play first base, I believe. Let's see if we can get that number. Tyler Holbert. That's number 26, Holbert. I'm sorry. Number 20, Matt Smith. Let's make that correction. Matt Smith now playing first base. 
First pitch from Roball is low and outside for ball one. So Roball coming on here in relief in the top of the sixth inning. That's ball two. That looked pretty good, but ball two for the Mustang leadoff hitter here in the sixth, Ben Diamond. There's a strike two and one. For some of us who might have missed it, Gary, who's playing second base right now? Well, that's Sakura. He moved okay. over from first, and Matt Smith came in to play first. Swing and a miss by Diamond. Two and two. Two-two pitch now. Rocks and deals. Curveball caught the inside part of the plate, and Roball kind of stalled on that. Looked like Louis Tiont out there from, <laughs> for a minute, but got the curveball in on the inside part of the plate for a strikeout looking, and that'll bring up Frank Kula. Sacrifice in the first, struck out in the third, and hit a that line drive to second base that Roball snared back in the fourth inning. I'm not going to go over the signals, I think, out there at, on the mound. Let's see if we have any numbers on Roba so far this season. I think Tony stole my stats. Or Frank stole my stats. And Roba, this will be his third appearance, 0-1 record so far this year. He's worked two and a third, giving up three hits, two runs, both unearned. Struck out three and has not walked the batter. Looks confident out there, yes. if nothing else. That's for sure. He works fast. Strike one to Kula. Here's the second pitch. Foul back. Big rip again there by Frank. And the Mustangs just one scheduled game next week. Supposed to be at home against Connellsville on Thursday against the Mustangs conference bye week. Hopefully they can get the field ready for that game. That ball's low and inside, so one ball, two strikes. Roball trying to get cool at a chase on that pitch. Our next Laura Highland series here on WMBS will be on the 19th and 20th against Bell Vernon. 7 o'clock start on the 19th, 4 o'clock on the 20th, and back-to-back -back strikeouts here for Roball. Swing and a miss there by Frank. Good off-speed pitch there by Roball, so he now trying to get a 1-2-3 inning on the Trinity side. We're not sure if the folks on South Union will have the Connellsville Laurel Highlands game on Thursday. Nice yet to be determined. But we'll have the Uniontown Elizabeth Forward Series, though, for you Monday and Tuesday here on WMBS. Uniontown 3 and 1 in the conference, Elizabeth Forward 2 and 0. Oh, so out on the line for those two teams playing Monday at EF, Tuesday at Bailey Park. Braden McKnight getting his first at bat, came in at third base for Joe Chambers in the last inning. 1 1 count. Roball wasting no time. That's strike two. One ball and two strikes as he just gets up there and lets it fly. McKnight came into the game, 250 average, two RBIs on the season. Roball, that's low and outside. Tried to get him with a little bit of a curveball there with a one ball, two strike count. Now makes it two balls and two strikes with two outs. Two outs in the inning. Swing and a miss, strike three. Wow. So Roball comes in and strikes out the side for Trinity, and he hops off the field with a lot of confidence. And we'll go to the top half of the seventh inning. I'm sorry, no, bottom, bottom of half the of the sixth. I'm getting Get a little ahead bit yourself, ahead of yeah. myself with those two, one, two, three innings. We're on the C. Harper Sports Night on WMBS and the Trib Live High School Sports Network. It's 8 to 5, Laurel Highlands. Casey's now offers a sit-down banquet hall at 65 Lebanon Avenue in Uniontown and can seat up to 50 people with kitchen facilities available. Bring your own food or let Casey's fine staff cater it for you. A perfect intimate setting for your small affair, such as showers, reunions, or after funeral dinners. For all information, phone 724-550-4126. That's 724-550-4126. 724-550-4126 for Casey Sports Cap. With branches in Markleysburg, Connellsville, Hopwood, Uniontown, and Periopolis, Somerset Trust Company is truly Fayette County's community bank. 
We invite you to stop by and experience the Somerset Trust Company difference. Local decision making, convenient locations, extended hours, award-winning online and mobile banking, and more. Somerset Trust Company, community banking worth talking about. Branches and ATMs throughout Fayette County. On the go? No time to stop? That's when you'll love Peach and Pharmacy's curbside pickup at Peach and Market in downtown Connellsville. Next time you have a prescription to get, let Peach and Pharmacy make it easy for you. Call ahead at 724-626-9600 or send a message. Let friendly curbside pickup keep you right where you want to be, in the driver's seat. Peach and Pharmacy, your local pharmacy. Here we go with the bottom half of the sixth inning. One defensive change for the Mustangs. Number 15, Yanoski, or I'm sorry, yeah, Caleb Yanoski comes in for Ben Diamond to play center field. Actually, Yanoski's playing right. C.J. Guest moving oh, over okay. from right to play center. I didn't see that switch. Yep. First pitch in there for a strike from Matthews, and there's a little looper into right field, and that's going to fall for a base hit, leadoff base hit. For Luke Laycock, the catcher. And Yanoski gets, gets right into the game there with a quick relay in from right field. Yeah. I bring up Cole Carl. His second at bat was on, on an air back in the fourth, came around to score one of the runs for Trinity in that inning. And that's. Hit off the end of the bat for a foul ball off to the right side for strike one. So after a 1-2-3 inning in the fifth, Trinity now with a leadoff single to start things here in the bottom half of the sixth inning, trailing 8-5. to five. So some outs to work with. We'll get an opportunity in the bottom half of the seventh as well to cut into that Mustang lead. Big hopper down to third. On to second for one. Kula couldn't get it out of his glove. And that eliminated the double play opportunity. Had a double clutch there at second base. Nice play over at third by McKnight. Got the big hop and got it over to Kula quickly, but the Mustangs do get that front runner. It was the fielder's choice 5-4 for those of you scoring at home. And now Matt Robaugh, who had that quick inning on the mound last half inning and had a two RBI triple last time up, comes to the plate. Nice looking freshman. Pitch from Matthews outside for ball one. A couple of good freshmen between Robaugh and Hathaway. Our buddy Jared Bozak was checking in. He told us that Hathaway is considered one of the best pitch, best freshman pitchers in the state. Uh, he certainly has the tools. Ball two, high and inside from Matthews. So pitchers count now for Matt Robaugh. Robot can't be too far behind him for what exactly. he's shown us so far today. Two zero pitch, ground ball to third again. This time, Braden Mc. Oh, and and in and out of glove. dropped at that time. Tried to get it out of his glove too quick, and that's going to be an E four on another potential double play ball. And that's the things that kind of hurt you if you. Give them extra outs. Brad Yeoman calling time. He's going to bring his whole infield in here to talk with Mustang pitcher Noah Matthews on in relief of Braden O'Brien. Matthews should be out of the inning. And he's got some ground balls. Twice. Twice, yep. Mustangs have not been able to turn them. Now just one out, two on. Game tying run coming to the plate with the Mustangs up 8-5 to five as we work here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Brian Morozak with Gary Frankhauser, Tony Hanola behind the camera, Nick Barczyk back inside our WV Medicine Uniontown Hospital Studios. Noah Matthews will remain in the game for now. Just one out in the inning. McLenathan will come to the plate, and he has had a productive day at the plate. Doubled in the first, singled in the third, and walked in the fourth. So the Mustangs now having a little bit of a Quandry here to try to get out of this inning. Ball high on the breaking pitch. Lights coming on everywhere. There's a building out there in the distance they popped out, popped out on. That might be right in the batter's eye. I was thinking about that. Out there in center field. 
1-0 pitch, outside ball two. Like lights coming at you driving down the highway. McLenathan trying to keep things going here for Trinity. The bottom of the sixth, it's eight to five. Entertaining game, and there's a shot to right field, and that's going to be out there. Yanoski's going to make a fair ball catch in the corner, tagging from Good. second, gets and the away. ball gets away, and that's going to allow us run to score for Trinity. Wow. Mustangs throwing it around a little bit this inning and allowing extra runners, and that error will cost them a run. So Yanoski makes the catch out there in right field deep in the corner, Gets it in and just unable to corral the ball. It gets away from Sankovic and goes to the fence down the third base line. So scoring on the play will be Luke Laycock. Laycock, yep. yeah. And that's going to bring up Hathaway with the runner still in scoring position out there at second base now as right. Roball was able to advance on that play also. They do now have two outs, though, in the inning. First pitch to Hathaway is high and outside for ball one. So run in makes it eight to six. Little ground ball to first off the end of the bat, and that's going to be an easy play over there at first base for the Mustangs' Alex McLean to end the inning, but the Trinity Hillers do put one up on one hit, an error for the Mustangs, and two errors in the inning for the Mustangs, and one man left on base. So it's eight to six as we go to the seventh here on the C. Harper Sports Night, WMBS and Trib Live High School Sports Network. Going on now, it's the Harper Chevrolet. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $239 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarperChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is for GMS or well-qualified individuals at 10,000 miles per year. 24 months of 3,500 cash rate equity and must have a GM lease or non-GM lease in household. Payment is for tax, title fees, and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends May 2nd, 2022. Walk slide last. Call dealer for all of the details at 724-929-8000. Attorneys from all over the state and nation advertise in southwestern Pennsylvania for personal injury and workers' comp cases. But most of them send their assistants to do the legwork. You might not even meet your attorney until your first hearing. We're local attorneys, Davis and Davis. We meet directly with our clients, including free consultation. There are no fees until you receive money on your case. If you've been injured, call Davis and Davis, representing you and your neighbors yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Call 724-437-2799. UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community, treating sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, brains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. They treat you efficiently and safely by taking all necessary precautions while disinfecting the clinic regularly. All insurance accepted. Experienced therapists. Convenient location and hours. Part of the community. Call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access 724-437-7500. CJ Guest, Patrick Cavanaugh, and Ty Sankovic do up for the Mustangs here on the top half of the seventh inning. Laurel Highlands leads at 8-6 to six and a quick swing and a miss from CJ Guest. Matt Robaugh starting his Second inning of work on the mound for Trinity. Struck out the side in the top half of the sixth inning. Misses there on the 0-1. Count now even at 1-1. One one. Roball not a big guy, but he certainly has some pop in that arm. Works quickly. 1-1 one, one here right down the pipe. 1-2 and two now to C.J. Guest. Guest 2 for 3 today. Singles in both the second and third inning. Scored a run and stole a base back in that second inning. Now Roball is 1-2 to C.J. Guest. That one low and outside. Count even at two and two. Mustangs, last chance to get a couple of insurance runs here before we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. I think that would be a great idea as Trinity has had runners on. Two, two in tights. Three and two. Get on any way you can at this point. Now we're full. 
Robot to Gask, 3-2 pitch on the way. Catches the outside corner for strike three. Home plate umpire has been calling that all night long. That's now four straight strikeouts for Robot for striking out the side of the top half of the sixth. Sends down Gesk here on the top half of the seventh. And that'll bring up Patrick Cavanaugh, who, like Gesk, will enter this plate appearance two for three. Had a two RBI double, scored a run back in the second inning. Single to left field in the third, but struck out looking last time up. Tristan McCoy will come to the plate for oh, the Mustang. Check that, yep. McCoy batting here for Kavanaugh. So forget about all those numbers I just threw out at you. McCoy, first pitch swinging here right on a line, caught by the shortstop, Braden May, for the second out of the inning. Hit it right on the button, but right at May, and quick out will bring up Sankovic to try to get something going here in the seventh for the Mustangs. Still leading 8-6, to six, but it's a tenuous lead. And two up, two down here in the top half of the seventh. A reminder, stay tuned after the game for our post-game show. Brought to you by State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman. Robas, first pitch on the way and in there for another strike to Ty Sankovic. Boy, Robas looks confident. He sure does. As 0-1 without wasting any time at all. Fastball misses high and outside. So Kind of right, even at 1-1. One one. It's a right-handed Ron Guidry. <laughs> Turn all these old timers tonight. 1-1 one, one on the way. Sankovic went around. A little excuse me swing there by Sank. Didn't know if he wanted to go after that one or not. Ended up being a half swing. Now Robis, 1-2. Here to Sankovic. Comes back with the heat. Misses low and inside. Count now even at 2-2. Two and two. And we're here in the top of the seventh inning. Mustangs up 8-6. to six. Robaz 2-2. Two, two. On the way, another fastball. Sankovic hits it high in the air to center. Zach Thornburg getting under. It'll make the catch for the third out of the inning. So another 1-2-3 inning for Matt Robaw. Last chance now for the Hillers. They're down two. It's 8-6 Laurel Highlands heading to the bottom of the seventh. Here on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Night. Mama Ruka's Pizza Shop, located at 64 Barton Mill Road in Uniontown, is your prime place to enjoy local high school sports. Mama Ruka's is family-owned and operated where pride of ownership certainly shows. The Sampson family carries on the tradition of homemade pizza, salads, subs, and wings. Mama Ruka's is open Monday through Saturday, 4 to 10, for indoor-outdoor dining and takeout. Call 724-438-9066 or visit MamaRukaPizza.com for their menu. Bad hair day? Bad day at the office? Bad day behind the wheel? Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sprouls Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock is not guaranteed continued insurance coverage and it's not available in all states. Bring forward to home construction season with First Federal of Greene County. First Federal's construction and improvement loans puts you in charge of your dream home project. With all the tools you need, First Federal offers construction loans, owner-builder loans, and home improvement loans. With offices in Fayette, Greene, and Washington counties, your loan stays here. Visit with a First Federal loan officer today or apply online at firstfederalofgreene.com. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, and MLS number 458729. It'll be Braden May leading off this bottom half of the seventh inning for the Trinity Hillers. Kavanaugh re-entered behind the plate for the Mustangs. Noah Matthews still on the mound. His first pitch to May right down the pipe for a strike, 0-1. It's May, Sikora, and Metz due up for the Hillers so they don't have anyone pinch hitting here in the bottom of the seventh. And Matthews able to settle down after a little bit of a rocky start on the mound for the Mustangs trying to close this one out after Braden O'Brien got the start for Laurel Highlands today. Mustangs up 8-6, 0-1 pitch on the way to May. Swing and a miss, strike two. Pulled the string on that one just a little bit. Had May way out in front of it. And Matthews is uh, also sporting the no sleeves. Yes. And now the 0-2 pitch on the way. Matthews to May. Swing and a miss, strike three. Took a little bit off that one. Two change-ups in a row, big strikeout to start the inning, that all-important first out here in the bottom of the seventh. That's going to bring up Sakura. Sakura is one for three, but 
hit a line drive to uh, the pitcher his last time up that was stared by Matthews. Won't hit a single back in the second inning, ended up scoring a run. Takes the first pitch inside here for ball one. And we're in the bottom of the seventh inning. Last chance for the Trinity Hillers. They trail Laurel Highlands 8-6, 1-0 pitch. And this one hit high in the air from Secor to right center field. Yanoski coming over, making the catch for the second out of the inning. Nice play out there in right field because these lights are not real high. And you got to believe that once that ball gets above those lights, it might be a little difficult to pick up. This will be Matt Smith batting. Matt Smith batting here for Trinity. He came in and played first base when Roball came in to pitch. And Smith, a 500 average on this young season, just two for four. Takes the first pitch here for ball one. He's driven in two runs as well. 1-0 pitch now from Matthews. Swing and a miss. Big cut there by Smith. He tried to cut the lead in half with one swing, but it's going to take a mammoth shot to get anything out of this field here to this, this evening. Now Matthews 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball. Whoa. Just missed. Thought it was strike two. It's now 2-1 two and one to Matt Smith. And first at bat of the game for Smith. Lefty facing the righty, Noah Matthews. Matthews winds and fires the 2-1. Swing and a miss. And the Mustangs a strike away from improving to 3-2 and two on the season. These non-conference games are all important for playoff time. If you do get into the playoffs for seeding purposes, all these games count. 2-2 two -two fouled off on the left side. And you look for those quality non-conference wins. Trinity playing in 5A this year. Mustangs, of course, playing in 4A for the second straight year. Now the 2-2 from Matthews to Matt Smith. It's on the way, and Smith staying alive, golfing another one foul. I'll do this 2-2 once again. Mustangs eight runs on ten hits tonight. Six runs on seven hits for the Trinity Hillers. Patrick Cavanaugh thought that was a pop-up that he was going to have a chance to catch, but it was over the screen behind us. Here we go again, 2-2 two -two pitch. On the way, breaking ball. Did he go? Did he go? They're not going to appeal. No. Or 4-3 and 2. Almost got him to chase that one. Here we go again, three balls, two strikes, two outs. Hillers down to their final strike, final out here in the bottom of the seventh. Pitch from Andrews. This one hit high in the air to center field. Getting under it, C.J. Guest will make the catch to end the game. So the Mustangs retire the Hillers 1-2-3 here in the bottom of the seventh inning and hang on for an 8-6 win here at Ross Memorial Park on a Friday night to improve to 3-2 and two on the season. We're back with our post-game show brought to you by State Farm Agent Lauren Yeoman. It comes your way next here on WMBS, the Triple Live High School Sports Network and Facebook Live. UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community, treating sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, brains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. They treat you efficiently and safely by taking all necessary precautions while disinfecting the clinic regularly. All insurance accepted. Experienced therapists. Convenient location and hours. Part of the community. Call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access. 724-437-7500. Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 and Hopwood are proud supporters of local high school sports. For more information on the programs that the Catholic War Veterans provide, Log on to the Catholic War Veterans website at www.cwv.org. You can also visit the Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 on Facebook or phone 724-437-3088. That's 724-437-3088 for the Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 in Hopkins. General Dentist Dr. Edward L. Wietek Jr. treats children, teens, and adults of all ages. Dr. Wetech performs all phases of general dentistry, including crowns and bridges, partials, full dentures, comprehensive orthodontics, root canals, bonded white fillings, dental implants to replace missing teeth and to stabilize loose-fitting dentures, and comprehensive exams and cleanings. Dr. Wetech's office is located on the National Pike, one mile west of the mall on Route 40. Call him up at 724-439-1616 for Dr. Edward L. Wetech, Jr. <laughs> 
Does your car sound like it's saying, trade me in, trade me in, every time you start it up? Well, go to Ford of Uniontown and trade it in. That's right, your Uniontown Ford dealer is ready to assist you with a new or pre-owned car, truck, or SUV purchase. Ford of Uniontown has all the deals, all the inventory, and they are ready to deal. It has never been a better time to buy a Ford. Service is their top priority. No matter where you purchase your Ford car or truck, Ford of Uniontown will be happy to service it for you. They offer Ford trained technicians, Ford certified parts and service, one year 12,000 mile parts warranties, and new state of the art service equipment. Call or stop in today to see the hometown service of Ford of Uniontown, Route 40 West across from Applebee's. So listen to your car the next time you hear it say, Trade me in! Trade me in! Ford of Uniontown, Route 40 at the top of the hill. Mustangs win it 8-6 here at Ross Memorial Park over the Trinity Hillers. Back on our post-game show brought to you by State Farm Agent Lauren Yeoman. Gary has your final summary. For Trinity, they did score six runs, had seven hits. They did commit one error, and they left seven men on base doing the damage for the Hillers. Zach McLenathan had, was two for three, and Matt Roball had a big two RBI triple back in the fourth inning. Also, Luke Lake Laycock had, was two for two for his position in the lineup. So the um, um, Trinity Hillers once again had six runs as they were able to make this game interesting after the Mustangs took a commanding lead early in the game. For Laurel Highlands, Car Carson D'Amico again having a good day at the plate, two for three. Alex McLean, two for four, but a huge R two RBI triple back in the fifth inning that uh, posted the Mustangs out to that lead that they did not relinquish. Also, two for three was Patrick Cavanaugh, and he had three RBIs for the Mustangs. The Mustangs finished with eight runs on 11 hits. They did leave seven men on base. And uh, on for relief, Noah Matthews, pretty impressive for the Mustangs as he was able to hold things down and get the win for the Mustangs. Laura Highlands improving to three and two. Again, the Mustangs just one game next week. That'll be next Thursday against Connellsville. Our next games here on WMBS for Laurel Highlands will be the 19th and 20th. 7 o'clock start at Bell Vernon on April 19th. That's a Tuesday. And a 4 o'clock start back at Laurel Highlands on the 20th. That's a Wednesday. But we'll have Uniontown Series next week for you against Elizabeth Forward. 4 o'clock starts at EF on Monday. And at Bailey Park in Uniontown on Tuesday for the Red Raiders and the Elizabeth Ford Warriors. Next week for Trinity, they'll play a conference series with Connellsville. They'll host the Falcons here 7 o'clock on Monday and then travel to Connellsville 4 o'clock on Tuesday. Gary, fun game tonight. 8-6 win for the Mustangs. Bats really got going on both sides. It's really always nice to come down here to this facility that Washington Jefferson uses as their home field. And uh, with the weather that we've been having, it's nice to get these games in. And uh, as you said, very entertaining game on both sides. Mustangs win it 8-6 for Gary Frankhauser. Tony Hanola behind the camera on our Facebook Live video feed. Nick Barcheck back inside our WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Studios. This is Brian Morozak saying have yourselves a pleasant good evening. Get your final score from Ross Memorial Park, Laurel Highlands 8 and Trinity 6. So long, everybody. I'm attorney Rob Harper, and I'm happy to be joining Bill Martin and Trip Radcliffe at Radcliffe Law in Uniontown. I grew up in Uniontown and chose to make Fayette County my home. I also represent the county as an assistant district attorney, and I know my way around a courtroom. If you are hurt in an accident, buying or selling a home, need assistance with an estate or will preparation, call me at Radcliffe Law, 724-439-3939. The initial consultation is free. Radcliffe Law, making the law perfect. Just as your local State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home and auto. And guess what you'll get? That's right, good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman is your go-to agent in Uniontown for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try to combine home and auto today. State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman will help you mix and match things perfectly. Call 724-592-6308 for your surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, 
State Farm is there. Going on now at the Arthur Chevrolet. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $239 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is for GMS for well-qualified individuals at $10,000 per year. 24 months with 3500 cash rate equity. You must have a GM lease or non-GM lease in household. Payment is for tax, title fees, and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends May 2nd, 2022. While supplies last. Call dealer for all of the details at 724-929-8000. You've been listening to another C.R. Barana Group High School Sports Day coverage of high school baseball here on WMBS, the Triple Live High School Sports Network and Facebook Live, which has been brought to you by the C.R. Barano Group, Fayette County Recorder of Deeds, John Marietta, State Farm Agent Lauren Yeoman, General Dentist Dr. Edward Wietek, Uniontown Detailing, the Centers for Rehab Services and Physical Therapist Jim Burns, First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County, m Transit, the Radcliffe Law Firm, the Browns Insurance Group and Insurance Agent David Hughes, Potter's Bar and Grill, the WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital, Ted Sova and Son Body and Fender Repair, Shop and Say Walnut Hill in Uniontown, the Somerset Trust Company, the Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 in Hopwood, Novacare Rehabilitation,